everyone, I'm Rahar Paris for B News Sports and welcome to another edition of Red Devil Classics where we take a look back at some of the finest moments from past seasons of BHS Varsity Football. This week we're going back to the year 1995 for another matchup against the Woburn Tanners. For more on this chapter in the Battle of Wind Street, we turn over to fellow B News Sports reporter Phil Icaro. Thanks Rob. This week we showcase Burlington Football's biggest rivalry the Battle of Wind Street yet again. We go back to 1995 as the Burlington Red Devils take on the Woburn Tanners. After successful seasons in the early 1990s, Burlington hit a low point during the 1995 season. Despite a disappointing 1-8-1 season, the biggest highlight that year was the October game against the Woburn Tanners. This also marks the first time that Paul Strati is behind the mic for a Burlington football game. So sit back, relax, and join Dan Brothers, Steve McGuire, and Paul Strati as they call this classic football game from October 1995 as the Burlington Red Devils take on the Woburn Tanners. Good afternoon everybody and welcome to Varsity Field in Burlington where Big Cat Sports presents Red Devil Football. This afternoon on an absolutely picturesque autumn evening, it's the Burlington Red Devils against the Woburn Tanners. Good afternoon everybody and welcome. I'm Dan Brothers, flanked on the left by Paul Stratty, the right by Stephen McGuire. We have found him from the wilderness of the Holderness Hokies who are off to a pretty successful season. But more importantly, Stephen, this contest tonight, you know a little bit about this rivalry between these two teams. Certainly, Dan. I think... Other than the traditional Thanksgiving Day football game, this is one of the biggest ones for Burlington in terms of the players' aspect. Uh, the attitude's always been, if we can do anything, let's beat Woburn. And it, this has always been a very big rivalry for Burlington, and hopefully tonight they'll pull one out. Now, Paul Stratty's lived this life for the past three years, and uh, even more, he's got a different perspective of it. He's got some relatives playing on the other side of the ball. Woburn 19-2-1. It's very important to them as well, this game, is it not? It certainly is, Dan. Uh, it kind, of, kind of comes down to a big rivalry, a uh, pride factor for both uh, sides here. Uh, Burlington, where they've been the underdog for so many years, it's really important that they come out really fired up and really take it to Woburn tonight. And, of course, I was walking down Main Street just a few hours ago, a wonderful uh, Lion's Day parade with my children, wearing, of course, my Burlington jacket with the football hat. You know, one of the things you have to look at, Stephen, is Sean McGuire is they've only scored 40 points, lowest in the Middlesex League. We know the offense is... Uh, uh, always been geared to scoring more points than that. What are they going to do tonight to kind of spice it up a little bit? Well, tonight they're going to be using a different formation that they haven't used all year, which basically in, in brings in two wing, wing backs. Uh, they're going to run a lot of traps off it. Uh, it's very similar to a simple uh, wing tee, but a little bit different. It adds uh, a little bit multifaceted to the uh, offensive attack. It'll be excellent in terms of a lot of play action in the middle uh, to run some passes to the outside. But basically they're going to trap with the guards and try to go a little bit of misdirection all night. So Now, Paul Australia, one of the uh, amazing things around the Middlesex League, these two teams come into this contest, both tied for last place. I don't think anybody has ever seen Burlington and Woburn tied for last place at this junction of the season. It's true. It, it's uh, the old saying of what a difference a year makes. Last year at this time, both teams were vying for the uh, Middlesex League title last year. Coming into this game, Woburn with the only victory against Method in a preseason game. Uh, it's really strange, Dan, for both teams to be 0-5 at this time of the year. Sean is thinking what now? What are, what are Sean's keys to the game as he, as he goes in the locker room right now and, and thinks about what they're going to do? Well, I think the new uh, formation is going to help out a lot. I think it's going to be able to, to control the clock, and that's something that in a situation that they're in right now where you want to do anything you can to get a W before, you know, before Thanksgiving Day or at least you know, toward the end of the season. So they're going to try to control the clock probably as best as possible and just try to score as soon as possible because the field's a little bit wet and it's going to be getting colder as the night goes on. So. And, Paul, you've, you've seen Woburn play a few times this year, a new quarterback, but nonetheless, they're still looking for the same type of results. Exactly. Woburn's offense, very easy, is going to be Gary Mallory's number 41. He's their whole offense. He's run for 724 yards to date, and he's also an excellent receiver. So I would look for, for Gary Mallory and also Woburn's offensive line, led by number 74, Eric Rennell. Big, strong kid, 6'2", 235. Uh, they're going to be running a lot behind him tonight. Well, there you have it. We're just moments away from the opening kickoff at Varsity Field in Burlington, and we'll be back with the opening kickoff in just a moment.
Martin at first down and 10. Back to pass, looking. Here's a throw to LeBlanc. LeBlanc. Oh, there we go. He there has go. some sideline room. There we go. 50, 45, 40, 30, 25, 20, 15, 40. Go straight back to pass. Good protection up front. Throwing over the middle of the field. He's got him. Richardson at the 18-yard line. Inside of him, Richardson to the left. Back to pass. Here's a quick one over the middle of Blake. Steps Wide inside. Yeah. 30, 25. It's a foot race. And he's going to win this one for a touchdown. Well, Mark LeBlanc. What a beautiful throw by Matty Good. third down back to pass Gordon he's on a rush steps up into the pocket throws over the middle to Richardson at the 35 30 and he's brought down at the 28 yard line here's Gordon now straight back to pass straight drop back looking looking throwing over the middle to the blank is caught at the 31 yard line and he brings it inside the 25 great pass again Dagestino in the game quick pitch left is LeBlanc left steps inside dies touchdown great play great play call We're back here at Varsity Field, just moments away from the opening kickoff. Stephen, we mentioned an absolutely beautiful night, and we know that you bring with you the latest in the national weather forecast. Certainly, Dan. It's an absolutely beautiful night. Game time temperature is 48 degrees and sinking. The wind is going to be a, certainly a factor blowing out of the north at 15 miles an hour, gusting to 20. The field surface is grass and is relatively dry after last night's debacle of rain just about two inches falling over southern New England and the forecast for the rest of the night will be clearing and lows all the way down to the upper 20s Dan I'd say uh, mid 30s by the end of the game and an absolutely beautiful sunset and a nice cool evening for football in southern New England absolutely beautiful the captains are meeting in the middle of the field for the Red Devils at number 61 Pete Mohan number 8 Brian Stebbins and 47 Steve Yvanian and special teams captain of the week is number 45, Sean, Sean McGee. McGee. For the, uh, the Woburn Tanners on the other side of the field, of course, I'm at the fight to see their captains, but I know one of them is number 52, David Levine. We're going to hear a lot about David Levine uh, in tonight's contest. 71, Rob Nickerson, and number... Yeah, maybe number 27, Matt O'Connor, the three captains for the Tanners. All uh, right, which one of you guys saw the opening kickoff, opening toss? Uh, Burlington receives. So Burlington wins the toss, they receive now. They'll be in their home red uniforms, red pants, white helmets with the red stripe down the middle of it, and of course the blue and white trim on the uniforms. For the Woburn Tanners, they're wearing their away white uniforms, orange numbers, black pants, black helmets with the orange and white trim. We are, what are we waiting for here? The officials are on the field. I don't mm -hmm. think the national anthem will be played tonight. The band is not here today. The band performed. It's an optional evening. The band turned a, <laughs> an absolutely uh, stellar performance over in the parade today. Well, they are addressing the flag, so we're probably just moments away from uh, the national anthem here at Varsity Field in Burlington. Well, the refs got faked out, Dan. It doesn't take much to fake out officials. <laughs> <laughs> Dan, with 30 seconds in, you've already attacked them. 
<laughs> you just seen what Paul and I did okay. the field hockey game. We're Looks like no nice. national anthem oh, tonight. No. <laughs> no. Yes. No Paul way. and I did a field hockey game. I did three quarters of it. <laughs> I had to go back to work. Didn't have a clue what we were talking nope. about. No. Nope. I did it once and I didn't have a clue either. At least uh, Paul didn't call any sand traps. <laughs> So nonetheless, Burlington will receive, they'll defend the goal to our right, the south goal, going from right to left. The wind is a crosswind, about 25 miles per hour, and teeing the ball up for women is number 10, Derek McEnanti. Of course, Derek McEnanti kicked the 35-yard field goal last week against the Red Raiders. And we're just moments away from the opening kickoff here at Varsity Field in Burlington. McEnany puts his foot into the ball and we're underway. Kick comes up short, Lawrence will field at the 20, out to the 25, 30, seam up the middle, breaks a tackle, and gets out over the 35 to about the 37 yard line where he's hog tackled there by a bunch of Tanners, led by number 12, Eric Sherry. Well, pretty solid return, Dan. Also, they basically, what well, Burlington goes back to the set up the wall with the front line, and the back is just expected to tuck it up. He makes a goal call and goes right up behind his blocker, so a nice job on the return. The Red Devils on offense. We'll have Matt Gillis, 77, and Greg Guerra, 62, with the tackles. 51, Matt Sherburn, and 52, Matt Leary, the guards. Andrew Bishop, number 63, is center. They start in their airplane attack tonight with uh, two wingbacks. David Burnaby, number 34, seeing his first var uh, Christian Mike, uh, Mike Burnaby making his first varsity appearance. He'll be in the backfield along with uh, Kyle Lawrence and Ryan Contreras, the wide receivers, Peter Chen and Brian Stebbins, and the quarterback is Steve Yavanian. On first down and 10, let's make it the 36 yard line. Wide to the left, Chen, wide right, Stebbins. Again, the airplane set up two wingbacks. Contreras now moves in motion. Here's the inside handoff to number 34, Mike Burnaby, and he bangs out over the 40 to the 42 yard line. Well, basically, Dan, just a counter trap to the backside. What Burlington is, is going to do most of the night out of that formation, like we talked about in the pregame, is they'll be able to run a lot of traps inside. It's a misdirection, which doesn't give the linebackers much of a read on the fullback. Also, Woburn again out in a 5-2. They're known for going man coverage or man-to-man -man on the outside with the two-deep zone behind uh, the cover on the defensive backfield. Gain of seven. Let's make it second down and three. Once again, wide left is Chen, wide right is Stebbins. Contreras starts in motion again. Here's the inside hand up. It's a fake. Pitch out to Contreras, right side. Steps up into the hole and meets nothing but white shirts. Leading the charge there for the tenant is number 53, David Levine. It's a flag on the play, Danny. A little bit of a... Looks like against Wubin. Yeah, I think they were getting a little bit excited over there as uh, the referee blew a whistle. They may not have waited long enough. Personal foul against Wubin. Now, the size of Wolverine is going to be a factor here today, Paul. Burlington a little bit smaller. What's Wolverine going to try to do with that size? Wolverine is, is extremely big up front. Burlington, I think, is going to have a hard time running. I think if they attack the ends, Danny, they're big up on the guards and that tackle, at the tackle positions, Wolverine. So I think Burlington to go outside would probably be their best bet. Attack on 15 yards to Contreras' run. Moves the ball into Wolverine territory at the 43-yard line. First down and 10. Big thing too, Dan, about the size factor is that the low man wins in football. So Burlington offensive linemen need to stay low and attack. Wide left Chen, wide right Stebbins. Again, airplane formation. Yvanian calling signals. On first down and ten. Turns and gives on the misdirection play to Contreras going left to right. Drives out over the 40 and inside to about the 39 yard line. Where he's tackled over the far side of the field by number 52 for the Tanners. That's David Levine. Nice job by the cornerback that time, Dan. He fought off the receiver's block, came up and contained him, brought the play inside. Well done by the Wolverine oh, defensive back. Patrius gained two at second down and eight. Once again, same formation by Burlington. Coach McGuire trying to get this offense off the ground. Yvanian now turns, fakes it, drops it over the middle. Contreras is wide open at the 20, 25, steps inside, go to the goal line, touchdown! Super play by Ryan Contreras. Made a nice cut at the 10-yard line and went in. Outstanding effort. 
The play goes 40 yards, and the Red Devils jump on top by a score of six to nothing. Well, I think one of the big things too, Dan, great play, but also they set it up in the first two or three plays. Uh, they, I think they threw Uber and off with the formation. They made some nice play fakes. We talked about it a little bit in the pregame as well that they're going to have to do that. They're going to trap inside and a great play fake. And just Petraris was wide open, made a nice pass, and then a great run after the play, too. Excellent job. So Kevin Beener is on for the extra point out of the hold of Gino Lane. Here's a snap, ball is down, Vina kick is up, and it is good. So with seven minutes and 39 seconds left to play in the first quarter, the Red Devils on the strength of a 40-yard touchdown pass from Ryan Contreras to Steve Yvian come up back up field, and the Red Devils lead by a score of seven to nothing. Well, we're gonna take a look at it again here, Dan. Again, excellent play fake, just turn, popped it over the middle. And what a great move right there. The defensive back was just left standing still. Great job, and the Red Devils take a 7-0 lead. Again, Dan, the play fake is what set it up. The in, they faked the trap to the inside and just looked right down the middle of the field. Well done. Well, you said in, in, in the pregame, when we were talking before we went on the air, you thought Wooden was susceptible to the pass. Very so. In the games that I have saw, Danny, the defensive backs, I think is the weak link on this team. Like I said, they're big up front, but the defensive backs, I think is gonna be the weakness. And Sean, right away with excellent play calling, went right after that weakness. And we got a six, uh, seven out the score by Burlington right now in the opening minutes. So the Red Devils, the first time this year they've led in the contest, and that might be important as this game develops. Kevin Vina will kick off. He is now five for five on extra points this season. Well, you know, one of the big things, too, that made that touchdown, Dan, is that the, the defensive back broke down, but the weakness of a two deep clearly is the middle of the field. And with, when you have man coverage underneath the way Woburn did, they're going to go after the middle of the field all night. Well, I have. Here's Vina now, squibs it along the ground. It's picked up over on the far side of the field by the up back, and he gets up over the 35 to the 37-yard line. That ball was carried there by number 12 for the Tanners, and that is Eric Sherry, a defensive back, and the Tanners will go on offense first down and 10. Well, traditionally, Woburn's been, uh, with the exception of a few good years with Mike O'Reilly, has been a grind it out, take it right to you, so we'll have to see what they do here tonight. First down and 10, the fullback will be number 32, Dabrio, deep back, Matarese, number 41. The sophomore in and hands to Matarese for left side, steps inside and gets grabbed by a couple of Red Devils there. 45, Sean McGee comes over and finishes off the pile for the Red Devils. But first there is number 84, sophomore defensive end John Whalen. Burlington coming out in a pretty basic 5-3. Three, three linebackers and three defensive backs. The three deep coverage are not man on anybody. And basically, it's a, it's a very good defense for the linebackers to read and to scrape and to go uh, laterally as well, Dan. Second down and eight as Matarese gained two on first down. Redden calls it over in the inside trap play to number 32, Dabrio, the fullback, and he bangs out over the 45 to about the 47-yard line where he's tackled there by number 51, middle linebacker Matt Sherburn. Well, excellent play. They came out in an offset eye where the fullback was basically set up between the guard tackle gap and the tailback was lined up right behind the quarterback. The offensive line for the Tanner, 74 Rennell, 52 Levine, 53 Parziali, 67 Johnson, and 66 Aldridge. Wide to the right is Simpson. Power eye formation for the Tanners. Turn the gift to Matarese on third down. He just uses that strength of that offensive line and drives out to about the 49-yard line, right in front of where we are situated here in the press box, and he appears to have a first down. It's going to be close to it. I think they're going to measure it here. Nope, first down. Of course, Paul, now Wubin's not uh, fooling anybody here, although sophomore quarterback Mike Redden did have an impressive start last week for the Tanners. He, he really did, Dan. He came in uh, after the fourth play of the game last week and did a very admirable job through the first two touchdown passes of the year for Wubin. Uh, stays in the pocket very nicely and throws a pretty good pass. And as Stephen McGuire said beforehand, he's a big kid. 
First down and 10 from the 49. And Red and the big kid stands up and calls timeout. Didn't like the formation Burlington was in, and uh, he'll take a timeout. Dan, don't don't make me sound so intelligent with my quotes. <laughs> well, you He's guys have looked great kid. so far. You guys have fed me tonight so well that I've just sit <laughs> here a and, big uh, kid. <laughs> and I sit back and uh, look, and I say, these guys are geniuses that I'm working with. They make me sound like I'm uh, one of the top-notch announcers around. <laughs> Well, we know you are, Dan. <laughs> <laughs> that's why, Steve. That's right. That breakfast I am buying on Thanksgiving yeah, right. morning. <laughs> Nonetheless, uh, around the Middlesex League, uh, this afternoon, uh, correction, uh, Friday evening. It's been a long time since Friday night. The Middlesex League. It was the. Let me get to the page now. Here we go. Storm winning by a score of 34 to six over Lexington. Eric Lockhart running for 101 yards and four touchdowns as the Spartans improved to 4-1-1 one one in the Middlesex League. Sean DeBraccio scored for the Minutemen. Back to the play here, 49-yard line, first down and 10. Wide to the left goes Simpson. A oh, question, wide right Simpson. Wide left is number 12, Eric Sherry. Eye formation, back appeared to move on first down. To the right comes Mattery, stringing it out nicely and bringing him down as number 51. Fumbled in. Matt nope. Sherburn, and a key play made there by number 61, Pete Mohan, who forced the play inside. Well, yeah, just a great job inside. Basically, the defensive end has contained and was didn't let the, the back break contain. They just went for a toss outside, and the, the lead blocker came through but made a just a horrendous effort to try to make the block. So nice job by the defensive end to contain everybody inside. That's probably cool he jumped on first down. So loss of one on the play, second down 11. Wide right is Simpson, wide left Sherry. Offset eye now, Dabrio in front of uh, Matariz. Turn and give to Matariz, going to the left. Being chased there, red shirts everywhere, and he dives out into Burlington territory at the 49-yard line, where the tackle was made by Sean McGee, along with number 77, Matt Gillis. Again, a counter trap that time, but run by Wolver in the guard and tackle pulling. The right side guard and the left side tackle pulling. Nice play. But uh, well done by the Burlington defense to get in there and make a great hit. The ball rests right on the midfield stripe, red and white. And uh, might men mention here that Doug Gillingham and his staff at the Burlington Recreation Department, a stellar job on the field. Considering all the rain we've received the past uh, 40, uh, 36 hours, this field's in fabulous condition. Third and nine. Reardon goes straight back to pass, looking, stands up, throws it over the middle, it's incomplete. As number 12, Eric Sherry was the intended receiver, and he took a pop from number 20, Ryan Contreras, as soon as he caught the ball. Excellent timing. That's one of the big things that defensive coordinator George Bailey stresses in terms of the defensive backfield. As soon as the ball's in the air, to break to it, and he, he may have had a good opportunity to catch the ball on a tip, but Contreras was right there to drill him and take him away from him. Well done by number 20. That's some of the things that the sophomore showed last week in their victory against, uh, in their loss to Watertown, Paul. Yes, he has a very strong arm, Dan. That pass wasn't that far off. It was, it was actually very catchable. On fourth now, down, here's a punt from McEnanti. Squibs it off the side of his foot. Red Devils coaches yell for Stebbins to get away from it, and it rolls out of bounds at the 23-yard line, and the Red Devils go back on offense, first down and 10. Not a bad punt. Burlington uh, looks like they might be able to get in on it, though, Dan. Uh, not exactly a Ray Guy punt, no, either, though, Steve. Certainly not. But nonetheless, it was effective. And that's all you need to be, Dan. <laughs> The Holden is Hokies, 27 to nothing victory this 28. week. 28. 28 to nothing. Stephen, of course, uh, involved in that program as an assistant coach, and we're glad to have you back. We, we were afraid we were, we were miss you the I whole know. season. I know. It's good to be here, certainly. Paul Stratty received the emergency call a couple <laughs> weeks ago saying, Stephen's lost. You're in. First and 10 now. Yuvanian has that airplane formation for the Red Devils. We'll see if Wuben does any shifting of it. Here's the inside handoff. Burnaby gets tripped up. At the line of scrimmage by number 64, Jai Smith, the nose tackle. And Burnaby gets out to the 24-yard line, gaining one. It will be second down and nine. Nice job up front by the Wuburn defensive line. Stay low, came in and made an excellent play. Speaking to Coach Nelson before the game, he said, this kid, Jai Smith, number 64, you'll see him. He's a big guy in the middle. He's wide and he's low to the ground. He feels that he's the best nose tackle in the league. And for coaches of an 0-5 team to say that this kid has to be playing some football. Second down and nine. The Avania looks it over. Contreras starts in motion once again. Here's the inside handoff to Lawrence. The little bull drives out over the 26. He is still on his feet, headed towards that far sideline. He's finally brought down for the Tanners by number 27, Matt O'Connor. 
Nice job, just to basically the play is a midline. Uh, quarterback just takes a reverse, not as in reverse, just takes one step back. Uh, midline right up the middle of the field, nice play. Great atmosphere at Burlington tonight as a, a raw, crisp autumn evening. Great night for football. The wind continues to blow from behind our backs in the press box across in the face of the Wuburn Tanners fans. Third down, let's make it eight. Yvonne sends Stebbins to the left. Wide right is Chen. He rolls out to the left now, turns, looking, throws the ball for Stebbins. It's caught by Stebbins at the 45-yard line, and he gets into woman territory at the 49, where he's brought out of bounds by number 27, Matt O'Connor. Nice pass by Steve Yavani on that one. Just lofted it over the lineman, getting it out to Brian Stebbins. And once Brian caught the ball, he made an excellent run with it. A super play. Gives Burlington a first down right at midfield. Big thing, too, is that he put that ball in a position where no one else could catch it. If it was thrown too low, it would have been picked off. If thrown too high, it would have been incomplete. So extremely well-thrown ball. Ball at the Wuburn 49, first and 10. Yvanian calling signals. A lot more confidence than the uh, senior quarterback. Fake inside, inside scissors. Play against Contreras. What a Plus great a tackle. Ball. And he gets down to the 34-yard line where number 11 for the Tanners, Dan Wall, made a touchdown saving tackle. What a phenomenal block by the right guard, or excuse me, the left guard who pulled. And basically all he did was seal off his man, contain him inside, number 52 for Burlington. What a, just a fabulous block. He lined him up and just took him right to the outside and enabling the hole to open up. Great job by the offensive line. 52 is Matt Leary. Ryan Contreras running while he has jets in the bottom of his feet. First down and 10. Here's a quick give up the middle. Lars with a little bit of room, and he's brought down by number 51. The sophomore linebacker for the Tanners, John Lafferty, but not after getting nine on first down. Right now, Burlington's offensive line, Dan, is just exploding off the ball. Taking it right to Wuben, right? It's, uh, it's no contest right now. Stranger things have been known to happen in this rivalry. The Tanners hold a 19-2 and one edge, <laughs> but Burlington nonetheless is trying to battle back. And I know one thing, Rocky Nelson is always weary of playing this team this late in the season. Well, Second down and one. Wolverine right now basically going with a monster instead of that two deep, Dan. They're just leaving one guy back there. Here's Lawrence, jumps over a tackler and dives inside. He'll get the first down over the 25 to about the 24-yard line. Number 70 for the Tanners, Steve Kalatko, a junior defensive tackle, six foot, 220 pounder, makes the stop. Tell you, a nice job up front, the offensive line. The biggest, that is one of the biggest things, too. I mean. You can play anybody that is that is bigger than you, but if you're more aggressive off the ball, you're lower than the man in front of you, and, you, and each play you just attack and attack and attack, you're bringing it right to them. That's what Burlington's doing right now. Stephen wants a better vantage point, so we've changed our spot in the press box. Yvanian calls the signals on first down and 10. Looking it over, fakes inside, hands to Burnaby on that misdirection play, and Kalatko number 70 there has made the stop once again. But uh, he did dive forward for about three. It'll be second down and seven. Again, all they're doing is they're pulling the uh, tackle. Nice job. Coming backside, they're going back and forth either side. It looks like they've had more success running that trap in to uh, running the trap to the right. So. We'll have to see if that's a tendency that Burlington's going to continue to go with. What you can is, go anywhere is, in the press box. Oh, that's your microphone. <laughs> Second down, make it seven. Again, they stay in that formation. I call it the airplane. Kind of looks like an airplane. If you draw it out, it looks like a jet with the wings. Here's the inside fake now. Yvanian on the keeper. Goes to the right side. Spins inside. Gets to the 20-yard line where he's brought down there by the number 11. That's Dan Wall. Now, Dan Wall mysteriously out of the starting lineup, but really one of the strongest defensive backs the Wuburn Tanners have. I'd say he's probably their best defensive back out there, Dan. Covers a lot of ground out there. That's the end of the quarter. That's the end of the first quarter play from Varsity Field. The score, the Burlington Red Devils 7 and the Wuburn Tanners nothing. You look at the scoreboard there on a beautiful autumn evening. 7-0, the Red Devils scoring on a 40-yard touchdown pass from Steve Yavanian to Ryan Contreras at the 739 mark of the first quarter of play. 
Kevin Vina out of the extra point. And the Red Devils have that 7-0 lead. Sean McGuire has to be very, very happy, Stephen, with his performance so far in the first quarter. Certainly, definitely. I think one of the big things, too, is that um, I've noticed not, not so much of the, of the spark or actually, I would try to define it more, in ter not in terms of spark, but in terms of uh, that we're going to come out and smash you, Woburn attitude. Um, it's certain, it seems for the first time in a long time that they, that's one thing they do not have tonight. Um, normally, they're just, you know, very, you know, we're going to come right at you, we're going to pound away. And, you know, tonight they seem to be lacking that a little bit. We'll have to see, you know, Coach Nelson, obviously, one of the, clearly one of the best coaches around in, in Massachusetts. You know, and uh, they've had a tough year so far. I mean, we'll have to see if Burlington's able to take advantage of it. And when, when you know, the old saying goes, losing begets losing, you know. And, and I think over time, and when you have a team down and they keep pounding and keep pounding and keep pounding, it's going to be a good thing for Burlington to keep the momentum going here again. Third down, let's make it seven. Ball is on the 20-yard line of the Tanners. Yvanian looks it over, calling signals. Here's an inside handoff, it's a fake, back to pass, he's in a little trouble, rolls to his right, sees some room, he's gonna go towards the goal line, dives, one, three, touchdown! Come on, ref, give it to him! Oh, the one yard it. line, Danny, I thought he was in, but his knee hit just before he went in. Oh, let me tell you, we want to see the replay maybe on this one here. If Nick He's about the one foot down. line. Let me tell you, this kid goes up and over like Gary Anderson of the San Diego Chargers did that year. You've got to give that kid this touchdown. Outstanding effort, though, by Steven. So the Red Devils have the ball on the six-inch line. First down and ten. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised to see the quarterback sneak here, Dan. They come out with Stebbins to the right, Chen to the left, same formation. Yvanian kind of looks it over here. Goes under center, Andrew Bisher. Takes the ball, drives, touchdown! They can't take that one away from him, gentlemen, and the Red Devils have jumped out by a score of 13 to nothing. Well, I'll tell you, the big, uh, in a situation like that, when you have fourth and inches or your, your inches on the goal line, the safest thing to do is run a quarterback sneak. And Sean's philosophy, very simply, we're going to see it here again on the replay. Let's go back to the first play by the Indian, though. You're going to see it here. But I think philosophy-wise, you never want to, you have less of a chance to fumble the ball or do anything wrong with a quarterback sneak. There he goes. How can they not give it to him? His legs landed first in the end zone. Let's Ball's see what happened. Look at the, the, the referees in the middle of all those players and the whole spiel. Uh, there is an injured tanner on the field. They're attending to him there. Both coaches have come out, the Burlington, the Wuben trainer and the Burlington trainer, Linda Bannon there as well. Paul, you know, one thing that uh, uh, one of my inside sources told me, Rocky was not a happy camper when he left the field last week. Um, you know, and to come out with this type of emotion in Burlington game right now, Wuben's in a little bit of trouble here. Yeah, I expected Wuben to come out really fired up after last week's game. They had an opportunity last week to take it to Watertown. Uh, Gary Mallory's fumbled with about three minutes left in the game, and it kind of really took the spark out of Wuben. And from that point on, they, they really played like they were a dead football team. And it's it seems to have carried over into this game, Dan. They really are uh, not playing with any type of emotion. Burlington right now is at the top of their game. They're hitting on all eight cylinders. Go. Sports flashback. And on LeBlanc to help bring him down. Here's third down and 10, the rush is on. Here's Gordon, throws a screen to LeBlanc. Watch out, here comes Sidney, he breaks a tackle. He's gonna load around with the 40, 35, 31, man to beat. 20 to the corner, LeBlanc touchdown. Great play, man, just a great play. Mark LeBlanc, the play goes 63 yards. For the last 94 season, we're gonna bring these flashbacks here. Uh, Kevin Vina has just missed the extra point, his first miss of the season. And as the teams come back upfield, the Red Devils are on top by a score of 13-0, the 927 mark of this first period, uh, excuse me, the second period of play. And uh, boy, I'll tell you what, some exciting people over in the Burlington side of the field. Well, I think right now Paul made a, made a good, uh, good thought about it. It's that, you know, Wolverine has not come out very fired up whatsoever. You, and I think one of the big things, too, we talked about in the pregame, Dan, is that this is always a very big game for Burlington. Uh, you know, with, without Thanksgiving, this is a big day. You know, as a, aside from Thanksgiving, this is one of the biggest emotionally 
because Wolverine is always, you know, when, when, you, when you're at the top as often as Wolverine is, you're always going to be the team that people are going after. And Burlington's had, rarely had success against them. And I think right now, Burlington, for the first time in a while against these guys, is in a great position to just keep pounding away and try to pop one in and just keep going. Of course, the key play there was, again, Ryan Contreras busting up the middle and Kyle Lawrence busting up the middle. The offensive line doing a great job on the first two series of downs for the Red Devils. Low man wins, Dan. Low man <laughs> wins. On that play, too, Jaya Smith got hurt, so that might be something to watch for uh, as the game progresses here. The big nose tackle. That could have a big effect uh, later on in the game here. So Matt Arise drops back along with Ingles for the Tanners to receive Kevin Vina's kickoff. Vina puts his foot in the ball low and a line drive right at Ingles. It goes by him, heads towards the goal line. He runs into the end zone and out comes out. 5, 10, 15, one tackle missed and gets out to about the 17 yard line where he's brought down there by number 15, Jack Diggins and number 61, Peter Mohan. Well, intelligent play, though, by the returner, Dan. He, had he gone, put a knee down, it would have been a safety. The ball, I believe he touched the ball out no, of no. the end. Oh, did no. he touch the ball he out of the end? He has to have momentum. control before okay. he goes in the end zone. And Paul Doobie, our official uh, expertise when it comes to referees, that gave him that ruling a couple weeks ago. I was talking to one of the Pop One again. The, the, the player has to control the ball then bring it in the end zone. At that point in time, it would be a safety. Anyways, more importantly, the Wolverine Tanner offense yet to get on track on first down and 10 from their own 19-yard line. That's the tight end, number 80, Andoni, into the left side. Two tight ends now in the game. On first down, he turns and gives a misdirection play. Number 41, Matt Arise tries to go outside, but number 51, Matt Sherburn stops him. And then it's number 20, Ryan Contreras, who just comes in and buries him there. Well, again, that's very similar to what Burlington's been running all night, Dan, that trap to the inside. Burlington is going to have to be watching. I just noticed Luke Lemon just got blown out about 10 yards back, and he's the nose tackle. That's something that if I was moving, I'd start looking at that as a uh, serious option. Got to move, Reggie. Don't take him away. Of course, Luke Lemon is starting because his coach Sean McGuire plays. He plays every down as if it's his last. And right now, this team needs some emotional, some of the lift that Luke can provide to them, and he's starting a nose tackle this week. Make it five-yard gain for Matt Arise on first down, second down and five. He has ran on the inside handoff to number five, Nathan Driscoll, and he pounds it out to about the 28-yard line. Kind of moves the ball forward as he was brought down. Where number 50, John Kemper, made the stop for the Red Devils. Well, I think one of the, I would just watched what Paul was talking about. Uh, Luke, obviously not, you know, as being size-wise, is being is in a huge disadvantage. But he, he's coming out right now. One of the big things that he is got to get use his height and his size to his advantage by getting lower on the man inside. He's a tough guy though and he's doing a pretty good job so far. Third down and one. Backs are split now behind Ridd. Costantino number 73 into the middle of that mix for the Burlington Red Devils. Misdirection play to Matt Arise. Fumble on the play. It looks like the Red Devils have recovered it. Number 48, Kyle Lawrence down the bottom of the pile to recover that fumble. And Paul, you hit the nail right in the head. Mallory's fumbling again. Lawrence recovering at the Red Devils in prime field position. Unfortunately, I think he's thinking too much out there, Danny. In the last two or three games, he's fumbled an incredible amount of time and really has taken the momentum, any type of momentum movement has had with his fumbling. He's taken him right out of the game. Well, what Big a break, though, for Burlington. What a swing, though, too. I mean, you have third and one. You know, first down, you need to keep plowing away. Now Burlington has the ball. Big thing, too, is that emotionally, that, that uh, as Paul just said, it's, it's a big drainer. And it's it's a pretty simple philosophy, Dan, but you can't score if you don't have the ball. You know, and that's something Wolverine needs to do right now. Well, Burlington has to take a timeout here with the 7.48 left here in the second quarter of play. Mike Burnaby, who is a surprise starter. I mean, he's been putting this off in, in his office because of his speed and his quickness. We're sitting on the sideline when the Red Devils offense was out there. It's one of those sophomore mistakes you're talking about. He was I, cheering, though. <laughs> he was happy, though. He was Pat Lawrence in the back saying, great job. He just kind of had to remember he was part of that offense. You know, Steve, I had to go back to something you said, though. I have to correct you. Okay. You said the safest play in the world in the six is a quarterback sneak, unless Steve McGuire is a quarterback. He always wanted to give the ball that big fullback, Sean Lane, so Sean Lane could dive I agree, over. I agree, so much. <laughs> I'm only kidding. I know. I have seen you go over from six inches out, and uh, you were two for two in your career, by the way. I think we had a few more than that. No, you personally were two I know, for I two. I think I had a few more than that. 
Come on, give me some credit, will you? God, I wasn't that small. <laughs> Nonetheless, well, the Red packing Devils. Packing them on now, again. <laughs> I think you're ready to play nose tackle. <laughs> Nonetheless, the Red Devils come back on the field at the 7:48 mark of the second quarter of play. Tyler B is now in the game. Touchdown here is huge, huge for Burlington for in terms of momentum. Now they've changed their offense. Burnaby's out uh, traditional backfield with a slot right Contreras. Single setback Lawrence back to pass. Yavanian throws it over the middle to oh, number 84. John Whalen, the sophomore tight end who had just come in in that formation. And the ball actually went right between his hands at the uh, 20 yard line. He would have had a decent pickup. Well, I think good thought, too. I mean, first down. Um, you've been you've been pounding away first down and, and when the ball's resting where are we looking here then around the 30 not a bad idea to take a shot early and now you have uh, three more downs to pound it away this is four down territory you're basically not going to punt um, so pretty solid job offensively good call I'd say second down and 10 ball rests in the 29 yard line then back to that airplane formation Yavani looks it over Calling signals, turns on the misdirection play to Burnaby. Burnaby bounces off a couple of people and pounds inside the 25 to about the 23 yard line. One official's pointing Wuben Ball on the play. No, nope. believe he was and down. One guy's pointing he was third down. down, so the ball was taken back after he hit the ground. Of course, Wuben's got the few gift of fumbles when the ball's been on the ground in this rivalry. Oh. Dare we even speak about it? Yeah, it was so long ago. It was Halloween weekend, too. Yeah, I know, you're right, you're right. But nonetheless, Third down, make it five, as Burnaby picked up five. Well, good to see, too, a second effort in terms of just putting your head down and trying to pound right in there. No, good job by the back that time. You'll be under seven minutes left in this first half when the ball is snapped. Once again, that same formation. Yvonne now sends a, in motion. Burnaby, misdirection play to Contreras. He gets a block and steps inside to about the 13-yard line and gets another first down. Well, I'll tell you, you know, we mentioned in terms of the fact of, of the uh, the potential weakness of Wolverine being the defensive backfield. One of the things I'm noticing is that none of the defensive backs are taking any read steps. So when the plays run, the, the guys are left standing there flat-footed instead of having some sort of momentum to cut up and come after the ball carrier. Very interesting uh, to, to see that, Dan. It's something to note when the ball gets past the line of scrimmage. Those, those guys have no momentum to come up and make a tackle. First and 10 at the 13. Single setback is Lawrence. In motion now, Burnaby right to left. Inside handoff, Lawrence gets met. Bingo, right there. First guy in the stop, down the bottom of the pile for the Tanners. Well, the is uh, number, looks like number 51, John Lafferty. And Paul, that's one of the guys that Coach Rocky Nelson singled out in his press conference midweek and playing very, very well last week. That's right, Dan. And that's the guy that Wooman is really going to have to look to to really step it up here and make some type of effort to do something against this Burlington offense that right now is, is on a roll. Key stat of the week last week, the Tanners gave up 200 and uh, 73 yards rushing. Now, Dicker had a lot to say about that, but nonetheless, the Red Devils have picked up right where the Red Raiders left off. Inside handoff uh, to number 20, Contreras. He's bouncing off a couple of people, and he slips under a tackle and gets to about the, uh, let's call it the nine yard line, where he'll be about five yards short of a first down. Well, nice job. Just lower in the shoulder. Go now, I would look here, Dan, I'll tell you. The, safe, the, middle of the, the safety in the middle of the field is no deeper than uh, than eight yards off the ball. So I would certainly look for a play action pass. These guys, their defensive backs are not taking any read steps. And, you know, as soon as they see the play action, I'm sure they're going to come up. So I would look for some sort of pop over the middle to the tight end or something misdirectional, maybe releasing both tight ends and having that middle safety have to make a decision. You're going to have one man open. There's only, you know, there's two guys going out and one man to cover him. So. I would look tight end here, Dan, for Burlington. Burlington has taken a timeout. You know, you quarterbacks think alike a bit uh, because Sean has taken a timeout. He wants to talk things over. He wants to make sure that he's bringing Whalen now into the offense. So he may be talking exactly what you've noticed here. And I'm sure his coaching staff up here in the booth with us, uh, who we got up here tonight? We got Sean Driscoll and Bobby Macaluso are looking at that as well. 
Oh, uh, Paul, the woman's really, uh, Rocky's gonna be just like eating himself right now because he's an yeah. emotional guy. I'm, I'm, I'm waiting there for that sweater to come off across the sidelines as he's got about halfway off. Uh, he's gonna be doing a slow boil over there because Woman right now is giving him a little or no effort out there. But you got to give credit to Burlington's offensive line too, Dan. They are really playing well right now and opening up some uh, gaping holes out there. That's right. That's Gillis, Guerra, Sherburn, Leary, and Bisher up front. 84 now. Backs are split behind Yovanian on third down and six from the nine yard line. They have to get to the three for a first down. Back to pass. Looking. Throws it over the there corner. There it is, and it's intercepted, no, it's incomplete. As number 10, Derek McEnanti, stepped in front of Stebbins and almost picked that ball off. Very close to being intercepted, Dan, on that play. Brian, though, really has to go for that ball on that play. It was a little bit underthrown, okay, and he really, uh, he has to really fight through the defensive back to see if he can make a play on that. Burlington was lucky it wasn't intercepted. On fourth down, Kevin Vina will come on to attempt a field goal out of the hold of Geno Lane. We remind you that Lane is a quarterback. The ball will be placed down at the, uh, let's call it the 17-yard line, a 27-yard field goal attempt. Ball is down, kick is up, it's on the way, and it is good! Nice, yes. nice, nice job. So as the teams head back up field in varsity field with four minutes, 47 seconds left here in the first half of play, the Red Devils lead by a score of 16 to nothing. Well, let me tell you, an excellent field goal and great to get three out of that for the Red Devils. I think if we go back to the uh, attempted pass on third down, one of the things I would say that Sean is going to correct um, is that the ball's got to be thrown a lot sooner and not be able to give the defensive back the amount of time that he had. Now, we had mentioned that the safety really isn't taking any read steps or moving that quickly, but one of the big things that the, uh, they need to do is, is the quarterback needs to get his head around a little bit sooner and throw that ball quicker and a lot firmer. That's a touchdown if, if he throws it to him. So, um, you, you know, can't, I was you, saying the same thing as I was sitting up here. You, you can't let him, you can't give him the time to react the way uh, th that we did on that time, but I'm sure it'll be corrected at halftime. Nonetheless, Sean McGuire has been very pleased with the, uh, with the progress that Steven Yavanian has made at quarterback. Keep the microphone on. You don't have to worry about clipping it back on your body. For those people who were uh, in attendance this afternoon at Woven Down Main Street, the Lions Day Parade to support eye research, a great job. If anyone wants to give a donation, they can send it to the Woven Lions Club in Woven, Massachusetts. But more importantly, V is going to kick this one off from his own 40. Back deep and receiving the ball there will be number 22. Uh, for the Tanners, he gets out. In the middle of the field, trying to find some running room, and he's finally brought down by number 61, Pete Mohan. But a good return for Mike Ingalls, and the Tanners start with their best field position of the afternoon at their own 44-yard line, first down and 10. Nice job, very aggressive return by the, by the Tanners, and they have plenty of time here, so Burlington needs to be conscious. It would be great to go in with a 16 and nothing lead at halftime. This is where Burlington's defense is going to have to make a statement here and step up. So it's first down and 10 for the 10. It's now in that power eye formation they like to run. Yeah, motion, uh, motion, motion, motion. before it. Now that's the same guy who jumped last time, I think, that fullback coming into the game in that power formation. And there's a dead ball foul, five yard penalty to be marched off against the Tanners for illegal procedures. You know, some of the things we mentioned in terms of this not being the uh, traditional Woburn team, uh, penalties rarely a factor, especially ones such as motion and the little, little non-disciplined things that, that, you know, we've seen in fumbles and, you know, certainly a little, little bit of a uh, lackluster attack here to begin the, the, the game, Dan. First down and make it 15. I formation now, Dabrio the up back, wide right, Simpson slot right is number 12, Sherry, who comes in motion right to left for the Tanners. Back to pass, it was moving again. Here's a pass on the far side, it's almost picked off. Ryan Contreras timed it perfectly, stepped in front of Simpson, the only thing he had in front of him were orange cones to the goal line. Nice play. Again, like we talked about with, uh, with Coach George Balian, very well done uh, by Contreras to break on the ball. Big thing though, that's uh, one of two things is gonna happen there. It's gonna, it's one of three things. It's gonna be a knockdown, it's gonna be an interception, or it's gonna be a completion for a long way. So 
gutsy play, but nice job to break it up. But nonetheless, Ryan Contreras, I think he's been taught that if he's able to make that do play, it. he has to make it. Because he's such a good athlete. You know? Yeah, he really is. He's the best cover guy one-on-one, -on -one, let's say. Um, but let's just, you know, George was telling me midweek, you know, the other two guys, they cover guys a little bit differently. Manion and Stebbins, they, they each have their own little technique. He's got three good ones back there for the Devils. Second down and 15. Backs are split behind Rid. Rid can go straight back to pass. Look, and here's the blitz. He's going to be brought down. Nice job. Brutal. Number 51, Matt Sherburn makes the play on the blitz, and he drops him back to the 29-yard line. Phenomenal job, I'll tell you. They sat in the 5-3. The two outside linebackers, Red, sent Sherburne, who's the middle linebacker, right up the middle of the field. And one of the things that enabled him to make the tackle, Dan, is that he didn't leave his feet. He came flying in. He could have been a little out of control, but broke down and just hung on, made a fabulous play. I'll tell you, excellent job by Matt Sherburne. The ball has to get to the 47-yard line. 24 yards to go on third down. The Burlington 47. The Burlington 47. Third down and 24. Single setback now is number 11, Dan Watch Wall. That's Matt Reese. I'm sorry, wide left is Sherry, wide right Simpson. Straight back to pass, yeah, draw is. play. Yeah, yeah. Joey, John Constantino grabs Matt Reese, and he's not going anywhere past the 32 yard line. Well, we just we made the call up here now. I mean, very, pretty safe play to run. You know, I mean, you, you don't want to give the, the other team any momentum with an interception and a draw very safe to run in that situation. Who was trying to get out of this half alive? I'd say so right now, Dan. They are, they are just doing everything possible wrong that they could do. Uh, Burlington again playing with a lot of emotion tonight and hit and really playing well. I'll tell you, there's blood in the water at this point too. You know, a touchdown here makes it potentially uh, you know, 20 or 21 or 22 to nothing going in, so. So there's McEnati, he's gonna pop the ball away. The ball is a high snap, he controls it nicely. Wobbles it again off the side of his foot. Devanian runs out of the way and hits it. The moving 44-yard line is down there by Sherry. Out of bounds at the 45-yard line with 2.36 left. And I believe Burlington has three timeouts. Well, I'll tell you, touchdown here, folks. Opens things up tremendously. Burlington's come out with a lot of emotion. Um, you'd never know they're having the season they are. You know, I mean, it's been a rough go so far, but tonight is absolutely no witness of that, Dan. Nonetheless, so, you know, by looking at the Wuburn Tanner's effort tonight, you understand why they're having the season that they are. Good point. Good point. And that's certainly no knock to Coach Nelson or anybody over there. Absolutely but, not. We know. A, it's it's a, a high level of respect in Burlington, the job that they've done, but right now their players are just not performing. First down and 10 at the 45. Burnaby goes in motion to the left. Here's a fake inside handoff on a delay by Contreras. He breaks one tackle of wall, steps inside, drives down about the 43 yard line, still trying to wiggle forward. As number 27, Matt O'Connor comes over and tries to leave him a little boot there. Well, I'll tell you, a nice job in terms of to slipper and slipping away. But one of the big things, too, is that uh, that one Woburn guy had him and just he didn't break down. He left his feet and he slid right by him. So. I know. Let's call it a two-yard gain on first down. It'll be second down and eight. That stick on the far sideline. Not too uh, generous to the Red Devils right now. Two minutes to go. We have reached the two-minute warning. John Driscoll dead on. I mean, that clock stopped at two minutes when the referee blew the whistle, and Driscoll right on target. We call him Dead-Eye Driscoll. Of course, he ran his classroom the same way. For those of you who had Driscoll, we were talking about... How many years he's been teaching? Intro to law, Dan. Intro to law. Oh, yeah. You didn't have him as an eighth grade social <laughs> studies teacher back at the Francis Wyman Middle School. It's getting scary. You don't even know what the Francis <laughs> Wyman like, Middle School is. This is like the good old boys network. I'm getting scared. <laughs> when Paul Strati was hanging around, we in the center school as the high school. <laughs> and anyway, years second ago. down. <laughs> second down about to, well, we have nine on the scoreboard. I think it's about seven and a half from the 42 and a half yard line of the Tanners. Evanian looking it over, calling signals. Burnaby starts in motion once again. Inside handoff, Lawrence piles off a few people. He drags Levine for about six yards and gets inside the 30 for a first down. Outstanding effort by Kyle. He just would not go down on that run. And on his own effort, picked up the first down. I'll tell you, I would look here. Um, Sean's going to recognize this. They're going to go. This, this, this safety in the middle of the field is... is very aggressive on the run. Too aggressive. Right, right, I mean, which is, is going to hurt, which we just saw right there. I'm interested to see what they do here in terms of throwing the ball. First and 10 now. 
Here's the inside hand up once again at Contreras. He busts it outside, dives forward, gets inside the 25 and the 24, getting five on first down. Where number seven for the Tanners, Mark Wiseman, makes the stop. I'll tell you, that was a definite setup play. Uh, here's where they're going to take the shot. Something's coming. The quarterback's brains are thinking of life. The clock <laughs> is running. We'll be doing about one minute left in the half when the ball is snapped. Chen goes to the left, Stebbins to the right. Again, they're in that airplane formation. Sean gave him some very specific instructions, too. I'll be interested to see what they do here now. Burnaby and Contreras to the wing. Single setback is Lawrence. Second down and five. Contreras starts in motion. Option, 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 Here's the option, inside option. handoff fake. Contreras stops, looks, throws Stop the ball in the option, up for grabs. It stays! Oh, and he's brought down incomplete. May have been some interference on the play. Maybe we can get this one back from our audio uh, playback technician, Nick Puglis, today. Number 10, Derek Macanante, broke it up, and the ball was up for grabs. It didn't quite develop the way they wanted to, as Contreras didn't have enough time to throw, to, to, uh, to throw the ball. Well, great job by the Woburn defensive end. He knows he's probably been coached at on, op or, or on option. He's coming up. He's got the pitch man and was very aggressive. Uh, made a nice Block job. Pat Lilly uh, came in and made a great play. So credit to it. Just a nice play by the Tanner's defense. So on third down and five, Stebbins goes to the right. Single setback is Lawrence. Here's the inside handoff to Contreras. Now Lilly grabs him again this time. Breaks one tackle and gets down to about the 21-yard line, where it will be third down and one. The clock is rolling, and Burlington quickly calls timeout. Here's the play now. No, McEnany just made a great defensive play. You saw the tail end of that there, and I thought he may have uh, interfered with it. That's a guy I've been picking on. <laughs> no, number 11 was the safety oh. wall who keeps cheating up as a strong safety. So there's a timeout in the field. Burlington huddled in front of Coach Sean McGuire. So they're trying to line the chain up, uh, the stake up on the far side of the field. Way over there, it looks like fourth down and a long one. And the ball has to go just inside the 20 yard line. I think Burlington has one timeout, Danny. So I, I would think that they would try to pick up a quick first down here. Of course, the clock will stop when just to set the chains. So, uh, you know, Burlington's calling two plays here. Big thing, too. No, well, I mean, I, I would say that I'd be interested to see if they're going to go for the field goal or not because, um, you know, three things, offense, defense, and the, and the kicking game. And Burlington certainly, I would say, has the advantage because of Kevin Vina. Um, I, I would say that the call would be to go for the field goal here, Dan. Well, nonetheless, Vina in practice has hit from about 43 yards. With a ball rest right now. Well, I'm wrong. Maybe not. McGee's in the game. With a ball rest now, it's a 21. Add seven, it'd be a 38-yard field goal attempt. Uh, McGee is in the game. He's probably there for blocking purposes. They're going to be in that house formation. Number 61, Pete Mohan's the up back. Wishbone formation on fourth down and Unbalanced one. Unbalanced to the right, too, Dan. Unbalanced right. You know where they're going. Yavanian looks it over, turns, gives to Contreras. Oh, oh he's play. second effort. Bounces off one, bounces off two. Still on his feet, but he's not going to make it. Good play. Excellent job. Number 70, Steve Kalatko, was first in the backfield from the weak side for the Tanners. And Kalatko has made a couple of big stops for Woburn. Well, certainly, I mean, in terms of uh, the thought there, I, I, would, I would say uh, the way, you know, you have a team down, it's worth taking a shot, I guess. You know, you have a team down potentially for the first win of the season, too. So try to get as many points as possible. So not a bad call. It's worth, certainly worth going for it. 38-yard field goal, a little bit out of Kevin Vina's normal make it range. Of course, if this is a one-point you know, one game, he might be drilling it through the uprights as we speak. But nonetheless, Wolven comes out now. They're going to be in that power eye formation with Matt Arise to deep back. Quickly, timeout is called. Sarah Twist directing the truck to saying, I don't know what's going on. Quite frankly, we don't either, but now we do. Burlington has called timeout. I want to make mention of our staff tonight. They have uh, rearranged their lives, of course, the last two days with the rain on Saturday. And then, of course, having to reschedule on Sunday. Sarah Twist is directing. Her camera crew tonight is Mike O'Regan, Sue Linder, Keith Butler, and Corey McNeil down on the field. Corey recovering from appendicitis. Keith Butler recovering from chicken pox. 
shows the effort that they're putting out tonight. Nick Puglish is in the truck. Dick Linder, of course, is here engineering the whole thing. And our producer of Red Devil Football is Rich Fucarillo. I'm, I'll tell you one thing uh, Burlington will do here. They're going to drop off defensive backs probably to 15 to 17 yards. I mean, the biggest thing now you want to be concerned about is not to get beat deep. Uh, anything underneath can happen, which is fine in terms of passes. And that's what they're doing right now. Um, just, you know, there's 21 seconds left. They need to, they need to score. You know, One other thing, score. though. The ball is still in good position for Burlington. If they do pick it off, they're in the wooden half of the field. Nonetheless, power eye formation. Stebbins is 30 yards off the ball. Reardon's calling signals with 21 seconds left on first down. Hands to Matteries. Matteries steps inside and gets rolled over there by number 61, Pete Mohan. Gains three on the play at second down and seven. Now, Paul, Rocky Nelson knows he's getting the ball back in the second half of play, so he may be sitting on it here. Yeah, exactly, right. exactly. He doesn't want to take a chance right now. Everything that's gone wrong for Wuben, I think they're just going to the locker room, regroup, and come off in the second half. Steven, you're, you're dying to say something. I can just tell. Big concern. Uh, 16 to nothing. You need to come out in the second half like it's 0 0 because uh, I'll, I'll, I'll quote the Boston Latin game from Friday, Dan. Um, they were they were up 12 to nothing at halftime and lost 33 to 12. Um, uh, they were down. Were they down playing BC High? Yes. Uh, they were down 12, they were down 12 to nothing and came back and, and won 33 to 12. Absolutely. And the, the coach the, of the losing team afterwards said, you know, we told, you know, he said, we told the kids this can happen, this can happen. They need to now come out with the philosophy at zero to zero. We need to continue to do what we've been doing, pound away. And I'll tell you, they, like we talked about, Burlington had the, uh, you know, the, the, has controlled the clock. But Burlington philosophy wise has to be zero to zero, coming out in the second half, do your job and continue to take it to them. Paul, any uh, idea what might be said in the woman locker room right about now? Well, Rocky had the sweater half off as he was walking across the field. I think Rocky's going to give him a, quite a speech at halftime. I would look for the second half, though. I would look for more Gary Mallory's. He wasn't really a part of that offense for that first half. Uh, that has a lot to do with Burlington's defense. Burlington played exceptionally well. But I would look for, uh, for Coach Nelson to come back and really try to isolate Mallory's a little bit more, maybe some flare passes, get him one-on-one -on -one with the defensive back on a linebacker where he is dangerous. So I would look for some, a little bit more of that in the second half. Well, those guys are the experts. Paul Stratty, Stephen McGuire have given their point of view. After one half of play from Varsity Field in Burlington, it's the Red Devils 16 and the Wuben Tanners nothing. We'll be back with second half action in just a moment. We can tell our little brothers and sisters, do as I say, not as I do. But they won't listen. We can tell them not to smoke. But if we smoke, they will smoke. And in their minds, we'll be hypocrites. We can yell at them. We can tell them they're stupid if they smoke. We can tell them it'll make them sick. It'll make them stink. But they will do as we do. If we smoke, they will smoke. at Varsity Field in Burlington at halftime. The Red Devils lead the Tanners by a score of 16 to nothing. My compadres are missing. 
Steve McGuire and Paul Stratius somewhere amongst this great crowd here tonight on a beautiful fall night. I'm going to go through the scoring summary. First quarter, 739. Mark. Ryan Contreras, 40-yard touchdown pass from Steve Yavanian. Genius kick made it 7 0. Adam Lawrence with a big game set up the next touchdown. A one yard plunge by Yavanian. Point after touchdown was missed, and with 9.27 left in the second quarter of play, the Red Devils led by a score of 13 0. And then with 4.47 left in the second half of play, Kevin Bean blasted a 27 yard field goal, and the Red Devils have a 16 to nothing lead. My, my, my experts have joined me. Sorry, Dan. Dan and Frank were down uh, <laughs> signing autographs in the crowd. Bean is going to kick off, but if you look at the top, you know, we talked so much about emotion. Burlington's got a bunch. Wolverine's got none. Well, 0-0 zero, zero right now, Dan. Burlington's got to have that philosophy going in. I know they do. Uh, some of the things they, I believe they worked on at halftime is, uh, you know, they're going to try to go after those defensive backs a little bit. We'll see how... Defense has got to set the tone right here, though, Dan. Here's being this kickoff now coming down, squibs it along the ground, bounces between the legs. It's a ball. It's a ball. It's picked up there by number 41, Matt Aris. Lots of room middle of the field, and he's brought down by number 15, Jack Biggins, number 61, and Peter Mohan. Halftime stat. I think the key one is Stephen Devanian, three for five, 106 yards and a touchdown. Yes. Good to see the, the throwing attack on the way up, Dan. And the Red Devils will start on defense the second half. They'll start with Peter Mohan, 61, and number 84, John Whalen at the end. 77, Matt Gillis, 50, John Kemp with the tackles. Number one, Luke Lemlin will be the nose tackle. 73, John Costantino will also be there. We'll get to the backs in a moment. On first down and 10, I formation behind Rin. Rin back to pass, throws over the middle for Simpson. And that ball was tipped by number 48, Kyle Lawrence. Then Simpson took a shot from number 20, Ryan Contreras. When these defensive backs play the way they can play, Dan, they're one of the best in the league. They break to the football and aggressively stick to the receiver. Good pattern, just a 10-yard slant. Nice job by the quarterback. Sherburn, 51, 48, Lawrence, 45, McGee, the linebackers, 8, Stebbins, 20, Contreras, and 47, Yavanian. All right, here's your secondary. On second down and 10, again, the I formation wide right. Here's a handoff to Matt Arise. Matt Arise gets grabbed there, but he spins forward for about two yards. Number 51, Matt Sherburn down the bottom of the pile for the Red Devils. Just a big, base. Sorry, go ahead, Paul. Big difference in this play. John Constantino just came in and is playing nose and is doing a super job the first couple of plays, stuffing up that middle, and it's forcing Matt Arise to go outside where uh, excellent pursuit by Burlington. Nice job. I think Wolverine just went with a blast that time. The, a play is designed with a fullback to take the, the close side linebacker and Burlington scraped it and bounced it outside. Third down and eight. You have to apologize to the, the uh, yard markers on the far side of the field. I'll get to that in a minute. Here's Raiden now back to pass, setting up the screen to number five, Nathan Driscoll, and he's popped. Number 48, wow. Kyle Lawrence. Wow. He's what a just, great stick. That was a major league stick. Kyle Lawrence. Wow. Five foot seven inches, 185 pounds worth of dynamite. Boom! He just banged Nathan Driscoll. Well, the best thing about it, too, Dan, is they had him lined up. He came right outside with him. All that play was, they came out in the divide backfield, the back on the right, both backs swung to the outside. It wasn't even, they didn't even pull any line, any linemen or anything. They just tried to go with a sweep outside, and what a great stick by Kyle Lawrence. Quickly, Wolverine calls timeout. Coming up. Wolven didn't have enough men out there on the field, Danny. Number 50 for Wolven is irate, screaming at one of the players on the sideline that he should have been out there, forcing him to take a timeout. That's Brian Murray. He is a he is an emotional, fiery type football player. I know him from the hockey rink as well. You know, the other thing, coming up at the end of the third quarter, we're gonna have Bob Concession up here to talk about the big win. The big win in town this past week, folks. The Burlington girls soccer team knocked off the number one team in the nation. We're not talking state here. The Winchester Lady Sachems, the number one team in the nation, and Bob's gonna join us at the end of the third quarter of play. He's gonna come in, and he's got about three minutes between quarters to just, just like, spew his guts out here and tell us how great it was over on, uh, at Brush Memorial Field last fr Friday evening. Fourth down, and about eight. Nice job, well done. 
Bob's just like amazed we've gone high tech here. The punter will be Macanati. He's about, oh, he's 15 yards off the ball. Contreras is back deep. Lone set that. Excellent snap. McEnati gets this one away, end over end. It's going to bounce down towards Contreras, picks it up on the goal, kind of bobbles it, goes to the hole! In Super Roman gets out over midfield to the 49 yard line. And that's just the way things have gone for the Red Devils tonight. Nice job. I'll tell you, he could have done one of two things. That ball was bouncing in the opposite direction. He, he took a risk and certainly paid off as the Red Devils get the ball inside the 50. A touchdown here, Dan, and I said it last year and I'll say it again, but the big red wave of momentum is gonna start to take off if Burlington scores right here. <laughs> to show you how bad things were going, number 32 for Wubin actually threw a block to free Contreras on that. He took his own man out on the play. And Davriol, the fullback, is a big boy when he hits you. First down and 10 now, so in that airplane formation. Here's the inside handoff. Contreras takes it to the outside. Running hard, steps up, nice and hit. steps right into number 27, Matt O'Connor, who makes the stops for the Tanners. Well, big thing, too, is that um, what Stebbins has to do at, in the receiver position is to break down and seal that guy off. He didn't really get a good angle on him. He went out kind of out of control, and he got no block in the corner, and the corner came up and made a great hit. Gain of two on the play, second down and eight. Here's a stat for you. I think that Rocky heard this one. He doesn't he'll understand why he's losing 16 up. Gary Matarese at halftime, six carries, 16 yards. Once again, second down and eight. Wide left, Chen, wide right is Stebbins. In motion now is Mike Burnaby. Here's the inside handoff to Lawrence. Lawrence bounces off a couple of people, but doesn't bounce off number 74, big Eric Rennell. And uh, even though his family ties, though, uh, the Red Devils have done a nice job on Eric tonight. Really, he's probably one of their best linemen out there, and he's been really been contained tonight. He hasn't had a chance to get in the backfield. They've been kind of standing him up, eating him with these quick traps and quick pops, and uh, Eric is a little bit off balance tonight. Well, I've noticed, too, Dan, what, um, what Woburn is doing to the motion is the linebacker now is starting to kick down the end and they're almost going to a six-man front when Burlington motions because they're, they're, every time they've done that, they've counted away. Third down, let's make it five. Middle eye formation field. now. Offset eye, fake to Contreras, back there to pass. Evanian rolls out, puts the ball under his arm, hits the sideline, and he's brought down there on a nice job by number 80 for the tennis. That's Pat Andonian making the stop from his defensive end position. Well, nice job by the defensive end to come up and fill. Also, the defensive backs did a, a much better job in terms of coverage. I mean, that, now third down, you're probably looking for a play like that. But good decision not to throw the ball away either. So on fourth down, number 84, John Whalen, the sophomore, will punt. Back deep is Matt Arise and uh, number 22, Mike Ingalls. Good snap. Ball kicked away. It's not the most, not the prettiest punt in the world, but it's, oh, it's, it's, it's Red Devils ball! And the Red, Red Devils. Devils have it! Yes, first Red down! Devils. Woo -hoo. Here he is again. Just yes. the spot. Yes. Incredible. I mean, oh, just an incredible so play. Man. I'm well, sorry. Well, what a great job, I'll tell you. Oh, flag down on the field here, Ben. Flag back. Uh -oh. Well, all right, let's watch the replay. Here's the punt. Roughing the, roughing the kicker against Wubin. Yeah, and there he is, number 45. Johnny on the spot for the Red Devils, Sean McGee. Shawnee on the spot. I got it, I got it. Shawnee on the spot. Well, I'll tell you. That's it right there. There's the, there's the momentum that Burlington needed. And um, one of the big things that Burlington has when there's a punt such as that um, and it's bounceable or, or potential to hit somebody, Burlington yells poison, meaning poison is obviously a bad thing, so you get away from it. So. There is so much excitement. Our headsets are just <laughs> ringing off of our ears here. First down and 10 from the 16 for the Red Devils. I guess Sarah didn't get the air she goes. On first down, now they're back to that uh, airplane formation. Inside handoff, Lawrence steps into the right side of the line, drives through a couple of people, but doesn't drive through number 52, David Levine, the captain for the Tanners, who makes a stop. He picks up about three yards. It'll be second down and seven. My apologies to the chains crew over there. Boy, did I catch an earful. They're about a yard and a half behind the ball in that one play, and it was the official's fault. The referee on the field had not set the ball and given their proper mark, so my, my whole heart goes out in full apology to the chains crew, and that ought to exonerate me for the comments I made to them at halftime. Make it second down and seven. 
Stebbins goes wide to the right. Same formation, double wing back, single set back is Lawrence, wide left is Chen. Here's the uh, give to Contreras. Contreras now jumps over and he gets brought down there by number 52, David Levine, who's doing his best to keep the Tanners in the ball game. Well, nice job in terms of defense. Woburn's defensive line penetrating. Well done by the defensive line to get across the ball and make a nice play. Get it, getting back to that big play, Danny. A very nonchalant play by the Woburn player there. Ball bounced off his legs and he just kind of looked at it. Number 41, again, Mallory's again. I, uh, it's incredible. So it's third down and seven. Wide right is seven, wide left is Chen. Look for the uh, quick slant over the middle of the field here. Man. Calling signals to Javanian. Terrence fakes over the middle. Here's Contreras. Yep. Oh, did he catch it? He catches the ball, and he gets inside the five to the four-yard line. There I thought go. the same thing, Steve. There you right? go. <laughs> call, Steve. There you go. Plus the fact that I, I thought he dropped the ball or something. The ball was a little bit behind him. He caught it. If he caught it in stride, baby, it was he's going to the well, second one. Uh, but again, if, if we see that play, and if you're looking at this, uh, I don't think he could have put it anywhere else. I think if had he let him too much, he would have given the defensive back an opportunity to step up and pick it off. So. Nice job. The middle of the field has been open most of the night due to the fact that the safety uh, is coming up very aggressively, almost too aggressively, Dan. Well, let's go back to the first and goal from the four-yard line. Lawrence will be the single setback. Way out here, about 20 yards off the ball is Stebbins. Here's the inside handoff. Lawrence drives to the goal line. Gets down to about the two-yard line, I would say, where he's stopped by a whole bunch of those white shirts down the bottom of the pile is number eight. That's Greg Andoni, and apologize, I had called him Pat earlier. So the ball's at the two yard line, second down and goal. I would look here, Dan, I think, potentially um, to, because Stevie Main runs the ball so well, I would say to go with a, with a fake, I think they're gonna, I would say fake, but tell him to keep it and not even to throw the ball. So I'd be interested to look for that play right there, Dan. Uh, second down and two. Chen wide left. Wide right is Stebbins. Same formation we've seen all night. The Avanian looks it over. Calling signals. Turns, fakes, fakes. Holds it himself. Is the bootleg. He steps inside. Drives for a touchdown. <laughs> Jesus, I think I'm connected. This guy's good. I think I'm connected <laughs> to my brother tonight. <laughs> like I said, Paul, you guys have made me look great up here tonight. Man, I'll tell you, that's that's almost Super scary. Good. That's scary. We talked to the, the top of the telecast. Wow. I had my notes out at halftime. The Avanian goes over from two yards out. It's 22 to nothing, and it's awfully quiet on the far side of the field. Well, the reason that you know we, we mentioned that that would be a great play to run is just because of the fact that he's such a good uh, runner. We're going to take a look at it again. We mentioned the best thing to do is to make a fake and to not, not even attempt to throw the ball because you're so close to the goal line. Uh, one of the things that makes a play like this that we're about to see so aggressive is look how aggressive the Wolverine defensive line is coming across the ball. They went for the fake. Yvanian did a nice job to tuck the ball and get in. And I'll tell you something, Dan. 22 to nothing is, is certainly a big deficit. And Wolverine being one in five certainly doesn't help right now. It's starting to accumulate. And Burlington's really taking it to him here tonight. Burlington just called a timeout on that play. Sean seems to have the group here together going over something. Well, I'll tell you what he's thinking. I, I, I talked to him briefly at, at halftime. Of course, you got to stay away from coaches at halftime. And, and I spoke to him briefly. What he was thinking was is this, is that he knows Wooden was going to go for two, down 16-0 if they scored a touchdown. So he might be thinking about going for two here and put Wooden three full touchdowns and three two-point conversions away. That's what he might be talking about here. Vina's block is out the middle of the field. You see all the happy Burlington fans. There's some smiles tonight in the crowd. Something that's been missing. You see Dave and Dan Hannafin there, former quarterbacks here at Red Devil Land. And uh, Mr. Yavanian's having himself not a bad night tonight Certainly. for himself. Yeah. So that's what they're thinking about here. See, Vina came out and got his block. Yep. He's sending the offense back out. They're going for two, Dan. So maybe I'm a little bit connected with the coach as well. <laughs> Dan, nice job. Nice job. <laughs> 3.38. Left to go here in the third quarter, 22 to nothing. And now the Red Devils are gonna go for two. And the reason to be to put them three full touchdowns and three full two-point conversions out. The Red Devils want the ball on the left half of the hash mark. Well, now I think, you know, the, the, the way Wolverine's defense has been so aggressive, my thought would be almost like a halfback throwback to the quarterback or some sort of 
trickery. They're going to drag the tight end here. I formation behind the Avanian. They're going to roll him out to the right and drag the tight end. Here's the fake. There it is. There he is. Got him. Throw to the corner of the end zone for Wheel, and he got it. What a catch. catch. Great call. Super Great play. call. <laughs> Great call. He's <laughs> right kidding to me. <laughs> and the Red Devils go up by a score of 24 0. Hey, now wait well a second. Done. Now, well give, done. Give the big guys some credit here. My credit job is to, to call the play, exactly. not to predict them. Well, here's the thing, too. I'll tell you why. You know why? Here we go. We're looking at it on the replay. Uh, one of the best things about that play is Burlington came out in an unbalanced line to the right side, which enabled. The two end guys to be able to, to be eligible receivers. 84 was the second guy in. Did a great job oh, releasing to the outside. Here it comes. And now it starts. I, I don't mean to, to jump in here. There's a flag on the play. Let's see the referees now. Uh oh, he's calling the captain out. Uh, I, don't, I didn't see anything. Maybe, maybe we were too busy jumping around here on that conversion <laughs> to see what went on. But see, Paul, you know, you've heard us talk about what goes on up here in the press box. This well, is, this a, is a, 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 you know, an example of it. We have fun up here. Here's the thing, though, too. Um, if there's a penalty against Hoover and it's assessed on the kickoff, um, if it's accepted. So, I mean, either way, Burlington's really not. Uh, he, no, the, the flag, listen, here's what happened. I have it because, you know something? I was zoom right down the field, had Sean talking to the officials perfectly. Personal it's a foul. personal foul personal against foul. Hoover. Oh. I've said it. Are they going to do the same thing? They're going to do the same thing. Why not? I mean, well, you know, and now you see the same formation. Something else may happen. Well, what's happened? Well, well wait a second. Yeah, let's see what it. the officials do here. Personal foul against Wolverine. Wait a second. Wait a second. I'm confused. I'm a little confused here. If it's, if it's just a personal foul against Wolverine. There's no reason to be out here. Take the right. points, go back upfield. I thought he said offsetting penalties, though. Personal I thought foul. he did, too, but now Sean is also talking half the distance to the goal. I don't understand what happened here. We'll see if we can get a ruling from down the field. It's, you know, two-point conversion all over again. It looks to be about the four-yard line rather than the two-and-a-half. So here's the inside handoff. Yavanian rolls out on the fake, holding it, holding it, throws it. Got him! Got him! Two-point conversion. And the only difference is, is a young sophomore, John Whalen, loses his first two varsity points. But knowing what they expect out of Whalen, he's going to score a few more in Certainly his career. Can. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Nice job. Again, all it was, good play fake. And one of the best things, uh, here's, a, here's a look at it. Best thing about this play is that Yvanian kept the ball as long as he, as he possibly could have to let the receiver open up. So well done by Yvanian and an excellent job by the offensive line for the Red Devils to, to in terms of keeping, you know, contain and everything else. Dan, we're taking it to him. Yeah. Yeah. And you know something, whatever Rocky said between quarters, between uh, first half and the second half, I, I don't think it's sunk in yet over the white and orange side of the field. Wow. As you would say, wow. Wow. <laughs> so the Red Devils come back out, they kick and say, look, they, they want to be on the field now. They run out to the field. There's Sean McGuire. I know he was a little bit concerned, but nonetheless, he has them three full touchdowns and three extra points. The two convert two point conversion types down. Woolman has to score at least three times, and if they're unsuccessful in any of those extra points, they have to score a fourth. Well done, Dan. Well done. Impressive. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having fun tonight, can you tell? I mean, it all started walking down Main Street with my Burlington Red Devils jacket on today for the Woman Lions Day Parade, which was a spectacular event, and we had some fun. Here's your Vina, he'll tow it up, kicks the ball now, oh, the left side, so they try to move Matt Arise off. Good shot. Matt Arise gets it at the uh, 13, 15, 20, dances left, dances right. Oh! What a hit! Kyle Lawrence again. Woo! Barry Melrose. Oh boy! He's looking for the truck that just hit him. He wow! What a hit! Five wow! Seven inch, 185 pounds of fully compact Kyle Lawrence just leveled. Love Gary those Mattarese. small guys, Danny. You gotta love those small guys. What a great guys. hit! That's the second great <laughs> pop he's had tonight. Well done, extremely well done. Wow! Best thing about that too is he broke down and really made a great solid hit. To, to the credit of Matt Arise, he's up and looking for the ball, first down and 10. Inside handoff, big hit by Sherburn. 45, Sean McGee comes in and helps to finish off number five, Nathan Driscoll. 
as he gains about two to be second down and make it eight. Dan, let me say one thing about Matt Sherburn. Um, I, I was able to go to a practice about two weeks ago and to watch him. Uh, he moves extremely well on his feet. He's physically a very big kid. He enjoys to hit, and this young man is going to be a heck of a linebacker. He's doing a great job this year, but look for some big-time things out of him next season as well. He's been a tackle, he's been an end, and he's found his home in the middle of the field for the Red Devils. Here's Matt Arise, right side. Bangs out, but 73, John Costantino. You talked about Costantino, Paul. He may, may have been the difference in the second half of the second quarter and now the early part of the third quarter. I really believe it, Danny. He's really plugging that hole up the middle now. Woodman was taking advantage of it before with, uh, when Luke Lemon was in there, the smaller player. John, a much bigger, heavier player, is just plugging that hole up and taking it away from Woodman. 225 left the third quarter of play. From Varsity Field, 24 to nothing. The Red Devils lead the Tanners. Uh, Correction, make a third down and eight. Here's Redden back to pass. Here comes the blitz. Shot shot. No, Matt 77. Gillis. Matt Gillis. What a great the play. Stop. We haven't Man, mentioned Matt Gillis' is. name too much tonight, but he has been in probably one of the, the best, best linemen. The about that, too, is he was so low. He came, he flew in, and he just got his leg, but he came in so low. That's the one thing that gets, I'll tell you, we talked about at the beginning of the game in terms of Wolverine being, Wolverine being bigger. If you play lower, you beat the big guy. Low, lowest, Football, lowest, low man wins. Low man wins, wins Stephen says. It's kind of like a, not like a poker hand, anyways. No. Anyways, fourth down, McEnanti comes back in to punt for the Tanners. Matt Gillis, one of the seniors who has stepped it up. Now, I know you've got some guests here, Stephen. I'm going to let you talk to them. Certainly. As soon as we uh, have okay. this punt up. McEnanti now punt is number. Contreras runs up. Get away from it, Ryan. Oh, he paid wow. the price there. Number 32 for the Tanners is Rob Dabrio. He drilled Contreras. He tried to field that ball. And uh, you want to do some talking, so I'm going to take you over here. Okay, Dan, we're joined uh, this evening by the two Hannafin brothers. Both guys have played in this Wolverine game. What's our feeling here, man? Taking it to him, uh, 24 to nothing. Nice. That's it, Dan. That's my interview. <laughs> Here, you lead it better. You lead it better than I do. But we're going to get to that in just a second. First down and 10 as we have the Dan Hannafin as well. It's probably a little more famous as Burlington football range goes, Dave. Here's Lawrence right side. Number 50 for the Tanners. Brian Murray tries to hog tie him and grab him, but can't do so. And nonetheless, I'm going to take Stevens' mic away and bring Dan Hannafin in here. I know, Dan, you speak a little less, but nonetheless, BU, how'd they do yesterday? Tough game for you, the uh, Terriers. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. We were playing in monsoon conditions. But, uh, <laughs> Yeah, we come out of it with a loss again. But nonetheless, Dan Hannafin was successful. I understand catching the pass. Yeah, I, I caught a pass. It was, I, I believe it was 17 yards or something like that. Not that you know, but how many passes have you caught this season? So um, I think it's about eight. I think eight is the total. So we're back to second down and five from the 43-yard line. Yvanian looks it over. Fake, here's the inside hand up to Mike Burnaby. Burnaby bounces off a of one as the woman Tanners try to ball tackle there. And he dives forward inside the 40 to about the 38 yard line. He'll be shy of the first down. Oh, Wubin, wait a second. They did tackle it, Danny. They got the ball. Woman took it right out of his hands. Number 52, Dave Levine, comes up from the bottom of the pile with the ball. But nonetheless, that doesn't affect Burlington any. I know I, I, know I no. took your mic. No, that's okay. Well, I'll tell you, one of, the, one of the things that Burlington works on is something called a quick change. And when the ball, when they lose the ball on an interception or a fumble, they still come out very aggressively to be excited to play defense. So Dan, uh, one thing we have to ask you: How's the switch from quarterback to wide receiver been? Um, at first, it was a little. Uh, I wasn't sure about it, but it's it's great now. You're getting to touch the field where normally, if I was that quarterback, I wouldn't be playing right now because of Foley. And Kevin how, Foley. And how has Foley done? He he's done really well. He's a great quarterback, and um, he he hasn't done that great the last couple weeks with the with the rain conditions. He's not real great in the rain, can't, uh, but uh, he's he's doing well, and uh, he'll come back for the next three games and hopefully lead us lead us to a 0-3 season from now on. On first down and 10, uh, Reardon's pass was incomplete for John Simpson, number 42. David, anything you want to add to this? Uh, not really. I, I agree with what Danny said. Foley's done a great job, but I'm proud of Danny. He's done really well. they got a good quarter of receivers, so uh, it's a tough year this year, but next year you can look for BU to come back. They'll have a strong season. Quick question. When was the last time Burlington beat Wolverine? Burlington beat Wolverine back in 1984. 83. 84 graduates, Skip 1983. 
<laughs> so anyway, second down and 10. We're back with the normal crew here. I'm going to pin Steve's I'm going to leave the microphone off for a second. Redden now uh, sets up the screen to Matt Arise flying through there, missing it. Matt Arise has some green in front of him. He gets inside the 40, 35, one man to beat, and Contreras grabs him along with number 45, Sean McGee. Great play by Sean McGee. Okay, that's what we've been looking for, Dan, uh, the whole game here, to kind of free up Mallory, so a little screen uh, screen pass out on the outside here. Let him go one-on-one -on -one with the linebacker or defensive back and have him do his thing when he gets out there. Excellent run. Well, I'll tell you, one of the one of the big things that set that up, too, is the left corner, whoever that was from Burlington, came up too out of control to make the play. And as soon as it, it matter he's caught the ball, he was by him, and the corner came in, left his feet. And uh, as soon as you lose, leave your feet like that, you know, you're, you're not going to be able to make the tackle. Well... We've got four seconds Thank left, you. and Woburn has Thank taken you. a timeout. We, uh, we're actually joined by the star of the week. You can't figure out how to put the headset on. There he goes. Not bad for a, for a coach. We have the star of the week joining us now, and this is going to be interesting until the fourth quarter starts and the last play by Woburn. But Bob Concession joins us. Uh, geez, you guys had a whole lot of fun over at Brush Field last Friday, didn't you? It was an unbelievable night, Danny. It was... Uh... <laughs> I don't have much of a voice left uh, from from that night. It was just an exciting night at, at Brush Field. It was the kickoff of homecoming weekend and uh, just a great upset victory. All right, Bob, we're going to hold your thoughts for one second. We have the last play of the third quarter coming up. There's four seconds left. The ball is at the, the Burlington 25-yard line, first down and 10. Here's Reardon back to pass. Screen. Here's a screen set up. Throwing over to Matt Arise, and it's incomplete. Defending on the play was number 48, Kyle Lawrence. Now the scoreboard clock throws no time. Well, we'll have to wait. That's the end of the third quarter of play. I'll tell you what they're going to try to do, Dan. We'll try to, Matt Arise being your best ball carrier, you want to get him the ball passing or running wise. So look for that in the fourth quarter as we get going. End of three from Varsity Field, Burlington 24, scoring on a two yard touchdown by Steven Yavani and Ryan Contreras catches a two point conversion. They lead 24 nothing, but let's get back to Bob Concession, the Lady Devils soccer. He's got his proud uh, coaching jacket on tonight. You beat Winchester one nothing. They are the number one team in the nation. That must have set up some real, real fun stuff afterwards. It was, it was an unbelievable celebration. It was a great crowd there. Uh, it was a nice night, and uh, it, it was just everything was perfect. It was just a tremendous uh, victory for our team, and our program. Let's go through the game. You got shot 20 to two. Right. Okay. So you had to have some uh, so, some really good play from your defensive, uh, your halfbacks and your fullbacks. Absolutely. And we, also your goaltender. We had, uh, they beat us 4 to nothing the first time. They Going into the game, they had scored 70 goals and given up three. We, we put a defensive formation in, hung in the game in the first half, had a good opportunity in the first half. Second half, they came at us with everything, and Stacey Ott was unbelievable in the goal. But, you know, Danny, it was like, when you talk about a team effort, it was 18 people. Everybody participated. Everybody worked hard. And they executed a game plan to perfection. I told you at three minutes, we're going to make it six. Stay with us. Second down and 10. In motion now is Driscoll go. to the left. Ridden now straight back to pass. Looking. Here's middle a middle screen, screen to Matt Arise. He's got four blockers in front of him. There's a flag, flag on the man. play. Jumps over one. Jumps over two. He drives to the goal line. And he's finally brought down by number 84, John Whalen. But there is a flag on the play. Well, I'll tell you, like we just talked about, they're going to try to do that, try to get the ball into Matt Reese's hands as much as possible. One of the big things, too, about the middle screen, Dan, uh, the, the defensive linemen need to be able to, to smell that out. If they're able to make penetration that quickly, they know something's different, something's wrong, they're going to do something that, that, that's not usual. So I'm sure the defense is going to be talked to about that. No flag. He caught it! Sean is yelling at the official, but he caught it over the line. Oh, come on! Now, see, that was an ineligible man downfield. As we first down and 10 for the Tanners at the one. Bob, let's go back to the goal now. You score with a minute and two seconds left. How did the play develop? Well, we had only had the ball over the 50 a couple of times. Uh, maybe you want to call us last play. Go ahead. First in goal now from the three yard line. Backs are split now behind uh, Ridden. Ridden turns inside handoff to Matt Arise. He bounces forward to the one yard line where number 50, John Kemper, makes the stop. Go. The ball came up the left wing. We get it over the 50, and the crowd went wild because we had the ball over the 50, and there was two minutes to go in the game. It came down the left, and one of our players, I still don't know who it was, but sent it across the middle, and the goalie went down to cover the ball. She caught it, bobbled it, and tried to get it again, and she hit it again. And Stephanie Collin was right there. She turned and hit it into the open net. 
It was incredible. Um, it was incredible. It was only the third time we had the ball up in that area um, in, the, in the whole second half. But it was the only time that mattered. Right. <laughs> That's go. what everybody says about the shots. <laughs> they don't matter. Second down and two. Offset eye now to the left. Raiden goes back to pass. Here comes Whalen. Whalen grabs him and takes it down. He's back at the 13 yard line, and John Whalen came from the right side. Ridden never saw him. So, Bob, anyway, what do you do from here now? Well, we, we're hoping that that's going to set us into the tournament in, in good stead. We have Lexington tomorrow, and then we'll be in the tournament by the end of this week. And, uh, you know, obviously a win over that team. The kids got to be flying as far as their confidence goes, and I think they'll they'll do a good job in the tournament. Well, Coach, congratulations to you and your Lady Devils. Good luck in the tournament coming up. You certainly started homecoming week it off well. And I also told my brother-in-law, Sean, finish that, it. that he's going to finish it today, So, and he seems to be doing that. Thanks, Great. Danny. Thanks, Bobby. Take care, and good luck in the tournament. Thanks, coming Steve. Up. Right, nice no to see you. Steve wants a meal, by the way, Bobby. <laughs> Third down at the 13-yard line, and geez, you know, let's just kind of uh, bring the confusion out here. Wow. There's excitement. There's emotion. This place is hopping. This has been a lot of fun, hasn't it, guys? Certainly, Dan. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, the difference now in the third quarter, Wolven has found Gary Matteris. Yeah, I mean, it's taken him almost three quarters to find him, but uh, he seems to be the uh, key right now, Dan, and I would look for him again. I mean, they've gotten down this far with him. I look for him uh, some type of screen pass, some type of uh, 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 quick slant or something like that. Be quiet, Dean, now. Do it now, baby. Come on now. You hear Sean in a headset. That's how bull might be down smart. the field. You know, Sean was talking to the officials. He told the officials that he was over the line of scrimmage when he caught the ball. Thus, it should have been an in ineligible man downfield. Now, what happened was the first guy called it. The second guy called him off on the play. Right. And the reason is Sean said, I told you that before the game. So, you know, the scouting department, Bob Macaluso, Sean Driscoll, Chris Brooks, and all the guys who go on the scouting trips brought back some good information on Wolverine because they were primed for that play there. Yeah, certainly. Well, I'll tell you, the middle screen uh, is a very good football play. I would think one of two things. They're going to go with their horse or they're going to play fake to him and go somewhere else. We'll have to see what they do here then. Third down, 13. Wide to the left goes Simpson. Wide right goes number 12. Shotgun, Dan. Shotgun formation. I'd say a draw to Matarese here. Here's Matarese in motion. Back to pass. Looking. Matarese tries to get out. Rand throws over the middle. It's complete. It's intercepted. Intercept. Touchdown. Oh, no. Number 80, Greg Andoni in cover the ball. He was in a wrestling match with Kyle Lawrence. And he makes the catch for a touchdown. Exactly. I thought Burlington had, I thought Kyle had the ball there for a second, but uh, Wuben receiver took it right out of his hands and, and carried it in. We'll have to get, get a look at it, Dan. Yeah, Sean has a good point. Watch Matt Arise move. Let's see if we have it in the replay. Sean's trying to tell the officials that Matt Arise went two steps before the play. I said something before the snap because he was moving. The question was, which way did he go? That's right. He, I, don't, I don't believe he was moving forward, Dan. I mean, uh, lateral. I believe he went forward with two steps. Let's see if we have it from the start. See? All right, let's see. Let's see. Ready? Matteris is there. Ready? Here we go. He can't be moving. One. Two. Oh, oh, that's, that's close. close. Real that's, close. That, that's the old cheat step that we see. Yeah, here it is. Andoni makes the grab right there and uh, into the end zone. So Wolverine's going to go for two from the left hash mark. Double Nine set. formation. Dabrio in front. Here's back to pass. Here back comes Whalen. Here's the rush. Throws. It's up, and it's incomplete as he overthrew Andoni. And now the Wolverine Tanner's coaching staff coming off the side and looking for a, uh, a flag. Yeah, they're but looking for a little less. interference call on that, but no, no flag on the play. 8.04 left here, fourth quarter, as the teams head back up field at Varsity Field. Wolverine Tanner's on the board. The Red Devils lead 24 to 6. four left here. Fourth quarter of play. Boy, we've had a good one here. All of a sudden, just when you think the Wuben Tanners are down and out, they're back in this thing. It's the first game I've seen this year too, Dan. So well, on. that didn't involve the Holderness Hokies. No, that, hopefully I'm uh, bringing a little, little good luck here, Dan. It's a good thing. <laughs> What Burlington needs now, Dan, is really just a nice long drive here. Take some time off the clock. Eight minutes left. So anyways. I don't know. 
I would look for a, some type of onside kick here. Burlington is expecting something. They have uh, hands team on. the hands uh, crew up front here, so I would look for some type of uh, onside kick. Everybody's up tight. May, now see, there's a one danger area between the 40 and the oh, 20, wow. 20 wide open yards. Thank you. Thank you. Ernie DiMartinez just wow. dropped off a pie. See, yeah, that's a good play. That's it. Number Smart 35 job. is uh, Dave Burnaby. He falls on it at his own 16 yard line. Nice play. On that play there, you don't want to take a chance on losing the ball. Just jump on the ball. So nonetheless, the Red Devils go into their white offense. Their airplane attack. The ball rests on the, so let's call it the 18-yard uh, line. First down and 10. And a key point in this game for the Red Devil offense, but more importantly, Paul, it's Woman's turn to come big defensively, and they haven't done so yet tonight. Right, uh, Woman's gonna do something right now, Dan. If not, the game is over. A couple first downs here, take some time off the clock for Burlington, and you can pretty much put this in the W column. So it's gonna be a big uh, big series of downs for Woman. It's first and 10 now. Yvanian looks it over. Calling signals, turns and gives on the inside handoff to Contreras, busted out over the 20 to about the 20 three yard line where he's tackled there by number 52, David Levine. You know, the one thing Contreras did in that play, he ran inside the tackle. The last four or five times he's run this play, he's tried to run outside the tackle where there hasn't been a whole lot of uh, oh, I'm sure that, that's a correction they made at halftime. Big thing too now, Dan, is they need to control the football, hang on to it, and just waste as much time as possible. That's all. Right, Ryan too, if you notice, had both hands on the ball. He's not gonna have it stripped. Second down, let's make it three. It was a seven yard pickup on first down. Devanian Collins signals, turns and gives to Lawrence right side. The little bull now gets picked up and dropped there by number 50. It's a flag on the play. Ryan Murray, that looks like it's gonna be a face, face mask penalty against Wolverine. You had a right, Paul, there. Any time you have one offensive play going up against three Wolverine Tanners when they're on defense, there's gonna be some sort of activity. Personal foul against the Wolverine Tanners, a face mask. Let's see, it's gonna be a five yard or a 15 yard? And once again, you mentioned penalties. Very uncharacteristic of a big penalty. Team, yeah. It was the deliberate face mask, 15 yards. You, you know, early in this contest, personal foul against Wolven, first offensive series of uh, downs against Burlington. Like you said, Stephen, very uncharacteristic of a Wolven Tanner team. Yeah, I'm sure Rocky Nelson's got to be very discouraged at this point, Dan. I mean, just not a very Woburn like team, I guess, is the only way I can describe it. The ball moves out to the 37 yard line. It's going to be first down and 10. Wide to the right, Chen, wide left, Stebbins. I formation now behind the Ivanian. Tight end Whalen is on the right side. The Ivanian turns and gives to the left side to Contreras. Contreras bounces off a of one tackle, but can't get outside number 88, Pat Lilly, who makes the stop. Wait, wait, wait! Yeah, nice job by the defensive end. Lilly's been, been, has really played an excellent game there, Dan. Is it good, Steven? I'd like to thank Ernie D. Martinez, the president of BCAT, for thinking of us tonight. I guess some pizza, yeah. <laughs> he brought up some dominoes. Oh, Stratty's involved here as well. The only guy who doesn't have pizza in his mouth is the guy who's probably talking the least, and that's myself. But thank you very much to Ernie and BCAT. Once wow. again, another great job. What a by great our... effort by the, the pizza. just hitting the spot right now, man. <laughs> another great effort by our BCAT staff and crew. We'll mention that uh, before the end of the contest tonight. We're back to the airplane formation for the Red Devils. Second down and 10. Woman's up very, very tight. Inside handoff, Lawrence. Lawrence pulls his way out over the 40 to about the 41 yard line. More importantly though, they're keeping it on the ground and the clock is rolling at 542 left here in the contest. I'd love to see Kyle Lawrence run. It just seems that whole pile just seems to move Dan when he's in there. Low to the ground and that it just moves four or five yards every time he has the ball. So tell you, first down here is, is clutch. I mean, the clock is now down inside 530 and we're looking at a, a potentially a huge victory because beating these guys, I know it's for the Burlington coaching staff and for Burlington is a, is a big th big deal. Third down and six. The ball's at the 41. They have to get out to about the 47-yard line for a first down. Here's the inside handoff to Contreras. Contreras busted up to the 48-yard line for a first down. Well done. Again, 
going to that trap inside. And like we've said before, that the trap right has been more effective than the trap left. Excellent job by 52 for Burlington. Pulling Leary. and just absolutely, you know, containing his man to the outside. And Burlington now just eating up the clock. Matt Leary, number 52, has been doing a great job tonight. No, I, go ahead. The college uh, budget has to take over here. I have homemade pizza waiting at home for me. Leary, of course, his mom wanted to make sure I said Leary on the air because it says Leroy in the program. I told her I have never made that mistake. First down and 10 from the 48-yard line. Big first down for the Devils. Clock rolling at 433. Ivania now very deliberately gives to Lawrence, right side, pounds it out. Inside Wuben territory at the 45-yard line. Again, that whole pile moving again, Danny. Kyle running with authority. Some pretty basic midline play, Dan, right up the middle, taking it right to him, looking good. Clock still ticking. We're going to be under four minutes when the ball is snapped here. Seven-yard pickup for Lawrence. Let's give him eight in the play. Second down and two. The only thing we're missing here tonight is a little Hank Williams Jr. Are you ready for some football? <laughs> the Red Devils have been here, ready to play from this time the opening kickoff was kicked. And the results thus far are favorable if you're a fan of the red, white, and blue. Second down and two. Airplane formation. Double wing. Single setback. There's the ball left side. Kyle Lawrence inside the 30. Five yard line, inside the 40 to about the 36 yard line. First and 10, you hear Sean McGuire in the back down yelling, great job offensive line. Excellent, I'll tell you, Kyle Lawrence refusing to go down and just picking up some big, big yardage here. Big first down, this should be just about doing it. You've got about, about three minutes and, and change left here in the game. You'll see now, you have the guys up front, let's mention them, Guerra, Larry, Bisher, Sherburn, Gillis, and at times the tight end, John Whalen. Once again, same formation. No changes here. First down and 10 for the Red Devils. Here comes Lawrence Rubin one more time. Left side, steps to the left, drives it inside, but this time, number 88, Pat Lilly drives him down, but he gets inside the 45 to the 42, picking up about, four, let's call it four in the place, second down and six. That's all they're doing, they're just, you know, Dive left, dive right, midline. They're just taking it to him. I'll tell you, they are taking it to him. Wolverine takes timeout with 2.47 left, and the Red Devils are over here on the near side of the field, filled with emotion. Just watching Rocky Nelson. He is irate across the sidelines. Clip Lloyd just went flying, and I'll tell you, he's tearing into somebody over on the sidelines. Not a happy coach right now. Well, for the first time in a, in a very long time, uh, Burlington's won the battle up front against Woburn. They, again, physically, they're not physically, but uh, size-wise, they're outmatched. Um, but Burlington is, you know, like we've been talking about with the low man wins, Burlington's been, men have been low. They've hit, been very aggressive, and they've really just taken it right to the Woburn offense or and defensive line. I think the highest out point, the uh, output, the Red Devils offense have ever had against the Ruben Tanners is 28. A touchdown here would break the 30 mark. I could be wrong. Doey Ganley is sitting at home watching this game. He's the guy who could tell me if I'm correct. Before my time. <laughs> Before mine. <laughs> Second down and seven. I've seen a bunch of these games and all of them have been good, clean, hard-hitting football. Unfortunately for the Red Devils, they haven't come out on top on too many of them. Inside handoff on that misdirection play by Contreras. He gets stopped there by number 50, Brian Murray. First on the stop for the Tanners, and they quickly call another timeout with 2.36 left. Again, I think Brian Murray was the, was the uh, player that Rocky Nelson was kind of tearing into on the sideline. And uh, he came up big on that play, but unfortunately a little bit too late. Third down. It's going to be, uh, let's call it a long six. My thought here would be, um, you know, you can do one of two things. A touchdown, obviously, is a punch out here. Um, and Woburn still has three timeouts left. The big thing, the concern, I think, now for Burlington is Woburn has all 11 men basically within a 10-yard span. Um, a play-action pass here. Somebody releasing over the middle. Is, and the ball is caught as a win. Um, so I'll be interested to see the play. Coach Jack Dillon has made his way down the sideline. You can hear the Red Devils in the background. There's Sean McGuire talking to his staff. 
Sean Driscoll goes over and gives him some encouraging advice. So Sean's like the calm one of the group on the offense. George Bailey and the calm one on the defense, keeping Coach McGuire under control. 2.36 left. I would look for something here, just Kyle Lawrence again, just pounding the ball. Single setback is Lawrence again, double wing, Burnaby and Contreras, wide right, Stebbins, wide left, Chen. Third down and seven. The Ivanian calling signals, trying nice to draw call. the ball. Nice Good job. Call. What a great call. Great job discipline-wise for Burlington to not move. And I, I think, uh, you know, extending the count, they haven't done it the whole game. Yep. And now giving yourself the, the opportunity to now run the safe dive to, to Kyle exactly. Lawrence. Exactly. The Red Devils have a, you know, their football shirt to say pride, and there's an acronym, D is for discipline. And right there, discipline, a big part of getting them closer now. Third down, looks to be a long one. Two minutes, 36 seconds left. Stebbins goes to the right, Chen to the left. Single set back against is the Bull, Kyle Lawrence. He has a new nickname in town, folks. That's what we're gonna call him. Yevanian looks it over. Turns, gives to the Bull, left side, first down, breaks a tackle, steps inside, he's inside the 10 yard line that to the nine. It, yeah, that could be it. And I'll tell you what, take the sign from the World Series last night, they held it up. It says the fat lady is warming up. She's yep. warming up, yeah. <laughs> Clock continues to rumble on here, Dan, 220 and counting. Super run by Kyle. There was moving players on the ground all the way up to where finally Kyle got tackled on that play. He's just dropping moving players left and right. Well, the defensive line for Wuburn right now, and I hate to say it, but they're, they're just, they're beaten. I mean, very simply, they, uh, they're having a, they're, they're coming high off the ball. Um, you know, they're, they're just not very aggressive, and it's been a rough go over here. Two minutes to go. John Driscoll right on once again. Two minutes left in the ball game. Referee comes over and gives them their instruction. 24 to 6, two minutes remaining, and the Red Devils on their way to their first victory of the season. And boy, I'll tell you, it's been a long time coming. I know Sean, and you know, every week I talk to him, he tells me when they've had a good week and a bad week of practice. I'll tell you that right now. And uh, when I spoke to him on Thursday of this week, he was happy. He said the kids have still been working hard. And uh, he, he said something good was going to happen. He told me about the play to Contreras. He told me about, you know, the fact that Lawrence could, could have a big game. Here's inside handoff. Kyle keeps going, driving his feet and gets to the seven yard line. Now some of those still. But the chipping's starting yeah. to go on, Dan. But nonetheless, Wolven is not known for that. They play good, hard, aggressive football. I know Rocky's going to go over and wring somebody's neck if they cause any trouble. Yeah. Yeah, he just, of, yeah. Exactly. A lot of the kids that are in there now are not their starters. They got to look like uh, some of the underclassmen are in there right now. So the ball's on the eight yard line, second down and seven as Lawrence gained three. It, was, it would only be fitting if Kyle Lawrence could push this one over for a touchdown because he's really he done a yeoman's a effort, not only on offense, but he's had a stellar job on defense. Here's Yovania now looking it over on second down and seven. Turns and gives, yeah, there's Lawrence once again, driving, feet moving inside the five to about the three yard line where it will be about a yard short of a first down. We're under a minute left, 58 seconds. The clock is rolling. Woman not even stopping the clock now, so they're just hoping time runs out before wow. the Red Devils can score again. Exactly. I would look for Kyle Lawrence. Like you said, Danny, he's earned it. He's, he can smell that goal line right now. Well, I'm trying to think one of two things here, Dan. I, I don't know if... Uh... I'm glad you said one of two things. I was going to say, I'm trying to think. Period. Uh, period. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, either Kyle Lawrence or... Uh, or maybe not even a play at all. Um, maybe run out the clock. Well, now he's going to take the time yeah, to delay, take the a delay a game, yeah. I would just say Burlington and take a knee. And, and you know something? Yeah. That shows a lot of class too, Danny. Yeah, and really you know what does. this is? This is a level of respect that Sean has for Rocky oh, Nelson. Exactly. No question. You know if Al Lanning was here, That's they'd right. be putting the ball in the end zone they'd and Lockhart would still be in there. That's yeah. right. And he'd be okay. going for a two-point conversion. There's a respect here amongst, you know, Certain coaches in the Middlesex League, let's say, and, and Sean has, I know, has a great deal of respect for Rocky. He knows him uh, off the field. You know, you were down with his family at halftime. So there's a, there's a camaraderie there. Sean, you hear him in the background saying, "You gotta love this guy." The Ivanian looks it over on third down and seven. I think he may give it to Lawrence one more time. Now he turns, puts his knee down, 
And that's gonna do it from here. Nothing left but for the clock to run down. Woman going over, feeling, congratulating Burlington. Feeling. 1983, it was Rick Accardi, not, uh. not Skip Jackson. And the Red Devils will celebrate right down here in front of us and extremely well-deserved for the Devils. Next week, the Red Devils, yeah, we're we'll looking we'll look ahead to next week in just a second. We'll look ahead to next week in just a second. Uh, the down on the field celebrating, you know, Joanne Lemlin told me a week and a half ago, she goes, you know, we were talking, actually two weeks ago, I talked to her, she said, you know, I want to see Sean jump up and down, and I want to see George smile. Well, you know something? Sean was jumping, and if you find George Bailey down there, he probably has one of those big ear-to-ear -ear grins. Steven? Oh, certainly. I mean, what, what a great feeling, Dan, I'll tell you. Uh, to register your first one of the year certainly is a great feeling, but also to do it against Woburn is, is certainly makes it that much sweeter. Just a great effort by everybody overall. Um, they took it to them here tonight, Dan, no questions asked. Uh, just a great football game. Very aggressive. They came out flying. They came out with a new formation, and they trapped them. They, you know, they trapped them to death. Um, yep. And, it, you know, basically we were very aggressive, hard off the ball. They hit hard and just played a great, sound, fundamental football game and took it to them. Paul, plain and simple, the better team won tonight. Exactly. Uh, Burlington had it in their mind. They came out and they played outstanding football. They just, like Steven said, they, they took it to them both offensively, offensively and defensively. Bigger team didn't matter. Burlington wanted it more tonight and they just really proved it. Super, super effort. Well, that's a great job, gentlemen. It's been a pleasure having the Monday Night Football uh, crew up here, Paul Stratty and Steve McGuire. I have some uh, congratulations and thanks to my own. Sarah Twist directed this whole thing career-wise. I think she's 5-0 and right now at Red Devil football games. Michael Regan, Sue Linda, Keith Butler, and Corey McNeil. Keith coming back from chicken pox. Corey coming back from an appendicitis attack. They are our camera operators tonight. A great job by then. You see the Devils in the middle of the field. Nick Puglis. Brought us all the lineups, the replays. He was the audio director in the truck. They're having some fun down there in the middle of the field. Dick Linder, of course, our in-house engineer, puts it all together. Technically, Rich Fucareal, the producer of Red Devil Football, on behalf of everybody here, of our BCAT staff, Paul Traddy, Steve McGuire, and the rest of the BCAT sports team. Good night. The final score, the Burlington Red Devils 24 and the Wuben Tanners 6.